this. And where is the real cash money? The following content contains adult language and humor that is not suitable for viewers under the age of 18. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Fine humor. The views and opinions expressed during the following video content are those of the individual and may not reflect those of others. Thank you. Good evening and welcome one and all to this edition of Pacific Forum for Pop Talk live on the Pacific Forum for YouTube channel, the Phantom Hooligans YouTube channel, also live on the Pacific Forum for X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Some even call it Twix. No, no I want a Twix. Twix. Mm -hmm. I, 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 don't, right. I don't care if it's left yeah. Twix or right Twix. I just, I just want right. Twix now. The cookie crunch, man. <laughs> and, and yep. we're also live on Rumble. Looks like that static stream key I decided to experiment with is currently working. You know, and mm -hmm. I, I think it's sad that you never acknowledge the Pacific Point Four Orchestra that always brings us in and uh, sends us out every show. They do such a wonderful job. They're sitting there in the corner, and they never get acknowledged. It's like, you guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. Keep it up, guys. I appreciate you. And we are also on Baron's Facebook page. Speaking of Baron, I'm here with yeah. Baron Armand Tag and Cash Money 007. We do have a few articles to talk about, and I am going to let everybody listen to something that I created using Sona.ai to get your Ooh. opinions on it. But first, how are you gentlemen doing today? Hey, I'm here. I mean, I got a surprise today. The, the long suffering bought me an office chair that showed up today. So, oh, hell yeah. I spent, dude. Yeah, I know. It's kind of comfy. It's got nice and cushions. So, my butt feels nice in there. And I just got to get kind of used to it now. But yeah, it is kind of a comfy chair. I, I'm not particularly happy. It's like, come on. You, you bought me a chair. Come on. It's, it's like, awesome. come on. It, it was I, a it surprise, was, Barry. It was a surprise. Mm -hmm. It was a surprise. Yes, it was. And, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, I, you know, you know me, I'm kind of a penny pincher. <laughs> I'm a shark. Wait, how, how much do I have to spend on this? Yeah, What's yeah, going exactly. on here? Uh. Well, I guess it's not how much do I have to spend on it because she's my sugar mama. So I, I suppose <laughs> if she wants to spend it, on, if she wants to spend it on her boy toy, she can do that. You know. Mm -hmm. Look, guys, I, I'm a boy toy, ha ha ha! But you can't see that out there, guys. All of you, uh, all you men out there, even you, Phil McCracken. <laughs> Jeez, for for a sec there, you called yourself a boy toy. I was thinking about Shawn Michaels of the WWE because that's what part of the lyrics in his theme song. Oh, it is Just a boy, <laughs> but, boy yeah. toy. Okay, I'm not going to say it. I, I sound terrible. Yeah, it also sounds creepy. <laughs> well, hey, it's either you're hearing me saying it or you hear the actual thing, but well, no, I'm talking about you know, him. I'm talking about him. I'm not, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about him. It it was when he made his 
you know, debut as a single star instead of being a tag mm-hmm. team with Marty Jannetty. He was a single star and <laughs> he was, you know, young and he was a, a heartthrob for the ladies. And Ooh. so that came up. And speaking, awesome. speaking of WWE, mm-hmm. we do have an article today that we are going to get to. From Battling in the Comics, it says UFC and WWE star mm-hmm. Ronda Rousey refers to ousted chairman Vince McMahon as Emperor Palpatine in new memoir. So we'll, we'll find out what that means yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, she she has taken a lot of hits to the head, and sometimes in the in the fighting ring. But uh, uh, sorry, did I say that? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what she has to say. Mm-hmm. And then we have this article from Games Radar about the Legend of Zelda movie director teases awesome idea and says he wants, excuse me, wants to create something serious and cool but fun and whims- whimsical. Come on, Mike, speak. Mm-hmm. Well, that's I I can understand you tripping up over that because that's a lot of stuff that you're trying to do. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah, it's they crazy. are. In, in yeah, they are. <laughs> <That's>, can't <laughs> just just sit back and say you want to make a Zelda movie like yeah, the Adventure of Zelda. <laughs> there you right. go. Boom. Mm-hmm. Just just follow what Legend right with Tom Cruise and the um, yeah. And we have an article from Cosmic Book News that says Nelson Peltz blasts woke Disney, Kevin Feige, Black Panther, the Marvels. The investor responds to claims that he doesn't know anything about the movie business. Hmm. Shots are being fired, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mm -hmm. And the other story that we have is Thundercats. Adam Wingard gives promising update on live action movie. Mm. Again, like we mm. were saying Sunday, is this necessary? I don't. It isn't. They can do these things right, but really, if you're gonna do this stuff, just just hire people who are doing stuff on YouTube or fan thing because they care so much about this stuff and then so much passion. Just hire them what's, and give them a good budget. What's the name? Of, what's the name of the the female one now and there again? I, I uh, she Chitara. 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 Yeah, I hear Chitara. Amy Schumer. I hear Amy Schumer's on the short list to play that part. <laughs> Amy Schumer. Right, Baron. Right. Oh mm-hmm. my Hey, goodness. you know what? This is Hollywood. You never know. Oh man. You guys want to hear jokes? That... No. <laughs> what? Who wants to hear Amy it? Schumer. No. Oh. You guys want to hear oh. jokes about my privates? No. Go away. No, 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 no. I yeah. don't need to hear any jokes about anyone's privates. I, I just don't. There are certain things that don't need to be said. Mm-hmm. I know. We hear enough about Crit's flipper rot. Uh, we don't need to hear more <laughs> than that. Yeah. So before we get into those stories, we are going to give you the latest episode of Beverly Hills 414 by TGAP Steve. And then I'm going to let you guys listen to something that I created using AI. Do what must be done. What? You? Oh. oh. Not me, Baron. Oh. <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so very, very sorry. Oh, by the way. Nerd. Nerd, nerd in the crowd. Right. I'm speaking of which, before we we get to that, I do want to say hello to, of course, Paul of Phantomology. Good to see you, Paul. Paul says, Vince McMahon is solely Mm -hmm. responsible for wrestling's rise in popularity in the 80s and its fall from grace in the 2000s. T-Gap Steve, of course, with Beverly Hills 414. Big and DJ DJ Ronnie J. I don't know where that came from, but it came. DJ Ronald J. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 you know, sometimes when I'm speaking, I don't even know what I'm saying. Not a real DJ, by the way. Right. So I he don't says, really... "Good morning, gentlemen." <laughs> so let's go ahead and 
get to Beverly Hills 414. We got something a little different. So if I need to lower the volume, I can do that. The land of stars and dreams, Beverly Hills 414. A tale of friendship, love, and secret sit behold. I am trying to keep myself up laughing, like Life I told you, Baird. <laughs> With a voice like gold Cash money, the dark and mysterious With a story untold Old Baron, the master of disguise Previously on Beverly Hills 414 A love triangle for Mike, it was one of those Disney kind of mornings, not modern Disney, but the Snow White Cinderella kind of morning, where all the world is bright and fresh and new. Cash money's hidden past, threatening their harmony. But, but Cash is hidden past, it's gonna threaten everything. Let me turn that down. Oh, that's the best part. Where passions burn and friendships shake. In the midst of fame and bliss, secrets can't be concealed. In the soap opera tale, true love will be revealed. Oh, it touches my heart, man. It makes you want to glue yourself to the TV. I just thought I just thought I'd let everybody hear that since I was talking over part of it. <laughs> all right so let's get back to the story shall we yes all Thank right thankfully he didn't have the pigeon scene on his windows or the sewer rats playing rhythm section under the countertops but it was still a grand morning He did a little dance in the kitchen. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, T. Gather, there's something you need to know about me. If I if I do a little dance, uh, yeah, not, not a good thing. Not a good thing. Pretended to tangle across the floor. Actually, it's more like face first on the floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With the fruit bowl, even as he realized some had gone bad, but no matter, nothing could ruin his mood. Not today. You'd think. <laughs> that was when he picked up a coffee can and, and paused. Shook it and something clunked inside. The sound was hollow and empty. A sudden damper hit him like a train. Sorry, amigo. I used up the last of the coffee. Here's five bucks for some more <laughs> essay. <laughs> was what the note inside said along with a five dollar bill mexican iron man had used up all the coffee oh okay all right here i thought you were gonna say it was used as an urn that was, that was, that was... <laughs> uh, a, a little big lebowski <laughs> reference maybe <laughs> Polly brand uh or, no donnie donnie brand uh coffee there we go Mike wasn't going to yell. He wasn't going to scream. He wasn't going to be mad. No, he certainly wasn't mad. If anything, he was disappointed. Very, very disappointed. Crypto was browsing the newspaper he had taken from his neighbor's stoop. Really, Cash? You're the one who's been stealing the neighbor's newspaper? You know what happens when you steal Strickland's newspaper. <laughs> Strickland. <laughs> he goes to his house, <laughs> comes comes back out, and, and he points a weapon at you, and he calls you a slacker. I know, I know, he does, of course. Well, all the time that Cash grabs a nine iron, so he, Mister Strickland, really... what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but but really, honestly, are you surprised that Cash would steal a newspaper? He's cheap. Uh... He'd return it eventually. 
The old bat just thought the paper came in the evenings instead of the morning. Wow. You still that from an old old lady or old man? Come on, Cash. That, that's no, that's no, that low, must be man. my alter ego or something. That, that's low. It is. He know. read the business. <laughs> He read the business section, the personal ads, and laughed at some of the advertisements there. Then the discount classifieds. You never know when there might be a really good deal. Is there even discount classifieds in the newspaper anymore? TCAP. <laughs> I haven't picked up an actual newspaper in a while. Goodness. To look into that later. And, and the, la the last time I did, it wasn't as thick as newspapers used to be. No, no not at all. No, my family still gets the papers. If they get something out of it, more power to them. Wow, listen to him. You can hear the he disdain had, in his voice. Yeah, I know. He had bit. a bit of indulgent, indulgence <laughs> in the comic pages. Not practical, but still entertaining. And then he found the insert. Greatest chin <laughs> contest. First prize, $1,000 being held at the flea market. <laughs> How do I don't we know, know. Casters and putting on this contest? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice of course. try, Phil. He yeah. said aloud, "Greatest chin contest, right?" <laughs> Phil must have known. He <laughs> borrows the newspaper and slipped it in there as some kind of uh, wicked lure for another trap. Dude, mm -hmm. that's ex Phil would probably do something like that <laughs> in real life. <laughs> yeah, he would. <laughs> I think he would. <laughs> He carefully folded the paper back up so he could deliver it later on. Maybe the old bad would hand him a dollar for being such a nice paper boy again. Mm. How how would you even judge that anyway? Jeez. I don't and, even and, know. And that just, that just makes Gats come this, off as low. Man, that's just, oh, uh, okay. yeah. Like a scumbag. Well, it's the Gats I know. I don't think I'm that much of a scumbag, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> he found himself rubbing his chin and spending far too much brain power on the subject. Then it, it really was worth. It had to be a trap, didn't it? TCAP, I don't know where you're going with this, but continue. I, I, I never know where it's going with these stories. <laughs> Uh, well, the cat is just happy that his chin gets mentioned and how magnificent it is. So I mean, it is, but that's, like I said, I have a Ben Affleck chin. If you compare the two, you... <laughs> well, wait, wait, wait. Here's how I'm, I'm, I'm spinning it. Yeah, Cash is comparing himself to Ben Affleck. Chin, there we go. Yes, that, 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 the... that, that's how that's how news stories go. That's how they get spun around. <laughs> yep. Fake news. Fake news. Uh. <laughs> All right, Baron was at the auto shop to get an estimate on the repairs needed for his car. The Baron boat of love. <laughs> you oh. got it. <laughs> was so, a 1977 Chrysler Cordoba with rich Corinthian leather. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Was a unique vehicle, and he only trusted the one shop to work on her. There had been a bit of a surprise when the mechanic had gone to check and discovered a couple of bricks of molding clay under the seat labeled as C4, but Baron laughed it off as a prank. Well, remember, he did have to drive 35. I can't drive 35. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. He had skipped breakfast because he wanted to be there right when they opened, so he didn't have to wait too long. And sip the over seeped English breakfast tea they they offered. I'm sure they offered more than the breakfast tea. Hey, right. guy, I went last week to have some work done on my card. Where I got it worked on, they offered teas, they offered coffee, they even offered hot chocolate. Yes, my dealership does that. Yep. Mm. It's hard some... to find people to work on a 1977 crash of Cordoba, though, but yeah, my dealership does that. Mm. Dropping some coins in the vending machine, don't let cashiers say that. 
He hit the buttons and waited. And waited. And waited. And waited. Oh no. The bag of stale chips was stuck. Uh oh. No. Not the stale chips. Come on, anything but that. He grunted and and gave the machine a little nudge. The chips jiggled. He gave it a bit of a harder nudge. The chips Mm. somehow got more stuck. He pushed it up to let it slam down. Don't tell me he got his hand stuck in there. No matter what he tried, those chips seemed to insist on being stuck there. Well, no inanimate object was going to get the best of the Baron. He pulled out a dollar. Ooh. Oh, you're gonna you could do that old trick where you get another bag to come out and knock the first bag down. Mm. You got it. Works every time. Our will. What if that bag gets stuck? He fed the dollar in, and the machine spat it back out. Obviously, the machine doesn't like your money, Baron. Yeah, well, I, pr- I printed it that morning. I should like it. <laughs> you tried again, turning it, it spat it right back out. He smoothed it down. Oh, that could be taken so many different ways. Yeah. It took it and waited, spat it back out. Can Mike manage to get more coffee to keep the great mood of the morning going? Why does he need coffee anyway? I don't. I I, I don't. Did Officer Hot Pants and stay over and he wants to offer breakfast? Will Crypto be seduced by the lure of fame and a thousand dollar prize to go and show off his chin? And is it really a trap or is he giving Phil too much credit at being clever? It's, it's both. A trap. It's yeah. I'm, it's a trap. Yeah. He, he he's looking for attention, and it's a trap. I'm sure of it. Mm-hmm. Has Baron met his match with uh, a pity vending machine, <laughs> trying to scam him out of more money and snacks, or will Baron refuse to accept defeat at the iron spiral of automation? Hmm, that kind of that kind of works into that. what I'm going to Baron sitting there shaking the machine. I told you. And, and then the person <laughs> at the auto place is like, are you okay, sir? No! <laughs> Back away from the machine. Back away <laughs> from the machine. Stay tuned as Beverly Hills 414 continues. Beverly Hills 414. That's a great song. Na, 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 na. It's a good one. Especially with, especially with the mysterious... With the mysterious cash money. And DJ Ronnie G says, I used to be called Ronald J. Weisenheimer. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 Mr. Weisenheimer. Ha uh-huh. ha. And let's see. Tim says, WW is fake. Oh, them Biden words here. <laughs> come on man come on really really do you want to start a war do you want to start a monday night war tim is that what you want to do because i'm gonna tell you what i'm gonna get you inside a steel cage and we're gonna have a steel cage match dude he invites you into his house to, for this fellowship and this is how you repay mike Hang your head in shame. In shame. In shame. Shame. Hello to Leah Rose, who says, Hello, Leah. Danim Hooligans. Hi, Leah. Yeah, the president and sole member of the Phil McCracken fan club. Can't forget that. <laughs> and he's asking if it was the Monstrism Tango. Whatever, whatever. Masochism. Yeah. What? What? Whatever. Whatever. I haven't had a good day, so. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. Well. Okay. Uh, Back away. Catch us back away slowly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're over here. Continue. And of course, everybody's saying hello to everybody. 
But before we get yeah. into today's news, I am going to preview something. Actually, I'm going to play the whole song. Ooh. Get everybody's thoughts. You can do it. Now, I I know. I could have played it last week, but guess what? I didn't know about this AI app until Friday of last <laughs> week. So this is coming a little late from the Transformers the Movie Watch Party that we did last week. But I thought, you know what? It's the 40th anniversary, and I'm going to write a little song because without Transformers, there would be no foundation for my fandom. Yes, I watched Masters of the Universe. That was my ah, introduction. It's a fantasy. Did you know that, Baron? That's crazy. Yeah, I know. But, but it was Transformers that formed the foundation <laughs> of my fandom going forward. Because by the time Transformers the movie came out, I already knew who Leonard Nimoy was. <gasps> How do you say? Yes. Because I was, started, wa- started watching Star Trek at seven years old. <gasps> yeah. So what you're trying to say is Mike is more than meets the eye. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, uh, mm-hmm. basically, yeah. So, there. There, huh? so, you know, give me your honest opinion. I am going to turn it up a little bit. We already gave I'm him not. the Google opinion earlier. So. But but you will let me know what I think. Again, this is AI generated. I want to make that claim. I didn't hire people to sing it. You know, <laughs> write the music. I wrote the lyrics using this AI program and I just want to get everybody's opinion because if you like it, I will do my best to make a music video and upload Ooh. it to both the YouTube and Rumble channels. Oh my. So here we go. Wow. I call that I call this more than meets the eye, the Transformers 40th anniversary theme. And unfortunately, with this AI program, it only gives you two minutes for mm. the actual song. You mm. you can't extend it, but I wanted to go with the first two minutes just to see how that would work. I might extend it. I might not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bravo, bravo. Yes. I was on base, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> And DJ Ronnie G says it's all right, I guess. Not enough turtles in it, that's why. Uh, yeah. Well, that was the idea to try to make it catchy. I'm not a songwriter, but I thought, mm-hmm. you know, let, let me just see 
what happens when I put the lyrics in the box for the lyrics and go by memory of looking at, you know, the lyric sheets of different CDs and different albums that I looked at over the years. And see how it turns out. You know, tell yeah. tell it what style of music it, I wanted it to be. You know, that 80s hair metal mm-hmm. always sounded the best to me. Mm-hmm. You know, you go, you know, Transformers just sold four million years ago. I that's why this is the age of GoBots, right, Phil? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, when Phil gets out of hand, I need to mention about how great GoBots is, and then say it's okay, it's okay. See, here's the thing, DJ. With with this program, you had to put the lyrics into the box, and then you had to tell it what style of music you wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And then it generates it, and trust me, there was some. I'm like, oh, this sucks right away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, that's not how how it's supposed to go. Yeah, the first one's a polka. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Transformers polka. <laughs> hey, that'd be cool. Sung by Steve Urkel. <laughs> Well, no, well, Weird know, Al. I, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, you I'll, I'll, Weird I'll, Al. Keep, oh, okay. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Because I do have a, another version that I'm going to play on Monday during mm. the the birthday stream. Oh. But I'll I'll tell you what. Between now and Monday, I'll see if I can create a polka version. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Uh, now again, yeah. with, with it being AI, I want to keep strongly emphasizing the fact that it's AI. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it could either turn out very bad, or you could get lucky after mm-hmm. so many different tries. And mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah, simulcasting a uh, Spock. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, Cash bought bought. This is a cool one for out. So, you know, he had, he had an extra, you know, a couple Baron, uh, extra half of money bin they needed to spend. Bar- so. Barrett helped though. So, yeah. yeah. We're, now, yeah. now we're officially the pirates that took over Pop Talk. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I helped. I guess That's I helped. Right. I said, I ain't giving you no tree fitty, you goddamn Loch Ness monster. Get your own goddamn money. I gave him a, I gave him a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and DJ Ronnie G says, "Then I guess I'd have to do some soul searching." <laughs> oh, there, there's still heart and soul in the song, DJ. I mean, the, you, you as a human still have to write the lyrics, tell, tell it when you want it to be, just you know, a normal singing voice, and then the chorus, and you still have to put all that information in for the AI to go. I will compute. I will compute. But I'll say one thing though. Hearing that, that uh, you know, page that does that. If I mm-hmm. was uh, writers and stuff like that, I'd be really nervous real fast and go, mm-hmm. "What? We only went with a three-year yeah. deal." <laughs> mm-hmm. Did we demand too much? Maybe, and <laughs> maybe. <clears throat> And we have a song request, guys. Oh, Brett wants us to play the king of pop talk. Right. Oh, the king right, of me, pop talk. Okay. Let me let me open my Discord and look for it. Yeah, we put all that fun stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, you have to give Everest credit for this. Yes, you have to give credit. Yeah, Chris, credit. Chris yeah, the one that Lord found Chris. out about, I, about the app. I, I have no problem giving him credit for this. Yeah, that way when it hits the fan, he's the one that's get they put against the wall first. So yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, it was Lord Crit. Lord Crit was the one, man. Really, honestly. It was his man. It was him. All right. So let me Yeah, I give you credit. Da- I give you credit. Let it download it. <laughs> well, well, yeah, he he deserves all the credit. He's the one that found it, told us about it. You know, mm-hmm. me being me going, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. But you know what? I, I thought, okay, let me listen to some of these songs. Don't be so judgmental, Mike. And mm-hmm. Actually, I've heard some of the stuff other people have made on there. It's like, wow, you know. 
-hmm. it's it's scary it's scary yeah it, it is mm -hmm. okay so this is a song that crit made called the king of pop talk you know, I, I like doing this instead of going right into an article where we might have high blood pressure. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. You know, I don't remember. Don't remember the uh, the song about calf too. That was in there too. So. Oh, nice oh yeah, that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll go through it again and find it. But here it is: <laughs> "Cane of Pop Talk" by Lord Crit of Everest Productions. <laughs> <laughs> and before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we do have a super chat from what? DJ Ronnie. Ronnie G G G G the turtles. The All right, put the money in the bag. I'll buy that for a dollar. The five dollars super chat says, "In my earnest opinion, I think I, I like Mike AI's music more than Shadowversity's AI art career. I still like his history videos." Mm, don't, don't. Thank you for that five dollar super chat, DJ Running G. It's because of you that this channel keeps going. We're glad you have more money than sense. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and and let, let, let's read some of the comments. <laughs> but, but you know, teach me. I even read a book about whale songs. Must be talking to the crit. Mm. Read a book about whale songs, huh? And, mm. and yes, uh, again, we, we got to give. Crit full credit. He yep, was the one yep. who taught us. Lord, Lord Crit corrupted us. <laughs> that corrupting orca. He did. He did. Yeah. And DJ Ronnie G says, seriously, though, I'm pulling your like, I know you are, brother. He was? Oh, that, okay. I thought you were serious. He went as turtle. <laughs> now, people who own turtles are, are always serious. But let's see. This, this is a true statement right here. I appreciate mm. that I know friends who work together on cool shit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's what collaborating does. It's what, you know, creating a friendship does, whether it's on YouTube or whether it's in real life. We work together on something and it actually comes out better than you expected. Mm. It brings a smile to your face. Yeah. Fox says, I feel like I just walked inside a biker bar. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to the biker bar of the Civic 4 and 4. Pull well, up a that's, chair. That, that's the mood we're trying to convey on this channel. Really, I mean, haven't you listened? And by the way, just to let everybody know, uh, Baron isn't really here today. I am actually something, uh, an AI project that they've been working on. So everything I have is right. uh, based off of algorithms. So while the real Baron has taken a, a long-deserved day off. So. Oh, boy. You know, that is some... <laughs> Sometimes I wonder which one of you two is uh... an AI. <laughs> well, Cat definitely is. 
<laughs> Here, you no know what? This is no. this is what I have to your answer, Baron. How about new? I mean, you know, you listen to him. There's hardly a tone of uh, any inflection of emotion. It's either he's a Vulcan or he's mm. he's an AI, and I think he's an mm. AI gone wrong. He escaped. He escaped the AI camp. Have any of us really honestly seen seen him? No, no, no. one has seen him. No, no only geez. only AI images of him and looking like Pixar characters. <laughs> you can go back to earlier episodes of Pop Talk. Heck, a year ago, I used to be on camera more frequently than I am now, mm -hmm. and I, I'm an actual person. As a matter of fact, I don't Me care. If I don't have the other lights on, but. <laughs> It's a scary uh, thing. Ooh, ooh, a man ooh, in the dark. Oh, yeah. Wait a second. Mysterious man in the dark. Quick, quick, quick. Start saying something Hi. about it. We're cocky like this. Hey, do guys. A, do, a, do, a, do a Blair Witch Project. Since you got the light like that on it, do like a Blair Witch True. Project. It's like, yeah, dude, it's dude, following dude, me through the woods. <laughs> it's They're following me. I, 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 I can't escape him. It's this wookie looking thing called the Baron. And, uh. and it's, it's massive chin. <laughs> And all I hear from the Baron is <laughs> <laughs> He's coming after me. They're all coming after it's like me. A, it's like a special uh, 48 hours or something thing. <laughs> <with> my... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, this person has not to be identified. I told you. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> they, they happened to go over near the tool shed. Then I didn't see them after that. You know how they always change the audio of the voice. Yeah. Uh, see, oh, Baron, oh, oh. Baron, you just look, I got look like you're you're ready to be some sort of conniving evil Bond villain. Mm. Albert's myself. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Oh, please do. Oh, I was hoping. No. Oh, don't go. I'm come sad on. now. He's so sensitive. I'm sad now. Yeah. I'm sad. Every, everybody <laughs> watching on Baron's Facebook, I didn't realize that he was this sensitive. <laughs> I got feelings, you know. Deep down. Uh, that, you know, that's going to be the next know. song Baron comes well, out with. He turned with. off the lights, too. So he just. <laughs> yeah, see, he's looking I, for I a I, effect. I, I have too much natural light coming in here because the windows are. I can. Mm. You know, Kind of, you know, follow that with, uh, you know, being, you know, like, like the, the said, you know, I'll buy that for a dollar. I'll buy that for a dollar. Ha! <sighs> and that guy loves the fact that that's what he's remembered for, too. That's what I love about it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Oh, I mean, whenever people think of Robocop, that's one of the things that people think of besides mm -hmm. the quotes from Robocop himself. Right. Your move, creep. I I would sit back and say I'd buy that for a dollar is probably the most uh identified because of people who haven't seen Robocop, but yet they hear that and just catches on. No, DJ DJ Ronnie G, yes, yes. He's DJ being Ronnie. funny, Cash. Come on, oh, come on. No, I know that's is. an I know that's an alien concept to you. No, it's not an alien emotional machine. I'm just like, come on, man. Try a little harder on that joke. Dang it, DJ. Okay. Uh, no, after the show, after the show, we're gonna have to have the cash AI algorithm changed a little bit. The cash. So it's gonna be a little so. bit more be a little bit more in line with everything. Oh, I, I, I'm not in the matrix. I'm not in, uh, not agents. Good matrix. good thing. Good good thing yeah, you're not I in know, the matrix. Yeah, the matrix is too good for you, man. Too good. Mm. And Spock says, Dane, we're in a biker bar. Where are the motorcycle jackets? Mm, good hmm. question. Pacific 4 and 4 motorcycle jackets. Ooh, yeah. I like me. I'm like part this. of Pack 414. Yeah. Yeah, we got a soap opera named after us. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, come on. Here's the, the obvious thing here with the Pack 4 and 4 motorcycle jackets. How many assholes we got on this ship anyhow? Yo! I knew it. I'm surrounded by assholes. That guy on the, the left side was like, he just turns around. I'm not an asshole, man. Come on, man. Uh, let's see. Going through the comments some more. 
I thought this was the wrestling channel. My bad. <laughs> DJ Ronnie G says King Shadow. And that kind of looks cooler. Okay. Why do you need to see the Acolyte when you can watch the Crit Plagueis movie come in June? Nice I mean, plug there. Why, 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 nice why, plug why there. does anybody need to watch the Acolyte? <laughs> wow, look at that. Look at that plug, this, dude. It just like yeah, look, slides it in there. Boom. Slides it yeah. in there. <laughs> and and, and this like hour. We wouldn't notice. And this hour of Pacific War and Fourth brought to you by Ever Ask Productions. That's mm -hmm. right. Catch the upcoming Plagueis film this June on Ever Ask Productions. Back to you, Mike. Mike almost looks like he's wearing <laughs> Baron's villain glasses. Probably. Maybe. Mm. Maybe. That's where they went. And it's good to see Anonymous. Do, 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 do. I hope you'll yeah. be able to join us Friday, man. Yep. Cash is subverting Mike on his own show. Well, in case anybody hasn't figured it out by now, anybody that tries to do that. Extinction to all traitors! What yeah. Yeah. Run, I swear. <laughs> Oh man! Anyways, Star Wars revitalized. Things I'm more likely to watch than mm -hmm. Episode. Eight. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get you. I have episode seven through nine. I, I get you. I get you. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Look, look how DJ Ryan G is kissing up the crit. He wants a part in the next one. That's what he wants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spock says, "I'll buy that for a dollar." <laughs> Oh man, why watch wrestling when you can watch Spock wrestle trying to get his stream working next Friday? <laughs> wow, wow, that's another plug. That's two well, plugs, man. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I get what he's talking I about. Know. You can tell me how close I am or how far <laughs> off I am on this Spock, but there are times where you get everything set up, you take the time to get everything set up properly, and there's always some hiccup. And you got to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, like it's yesterday when I when I started the Mad Max stream. For some reason, instead of starting the Mad Max stream on the YouTube site, it decided to bring up last week's title for the Final Fantasy Reaper stream. It's like, mm. no, that's not the stream I selected. Come on. Come on, man. And he still hasn't found the stream he's looking for. No, I I got it working. I got it working. Yeah, I, I, I did. So, I did. I did some more damage. I am having so much fun playing that game. No, I feel bad for missing that. I, I enjoy watching that being played. Watching, getting on, you know, getting on the old uh, Discord and mocking. Hey, look over there! <laughs> and DJ Ronnie G says he saw episode seven and Rogue. Yeah, mm -hmm. see. Uh, of all the Disney Star Wars movies that they uh -huh. made, uh -huh. you know, Rogue was probably the best. Yeah. Uh -huh. All the movies, yes, definitely. Uh -huh. And uh, the Obi-Wan series was the best, too, that they did. Yeah, so especially Episode 7, where they went to the Dragon Ball Z planet and fought. It was amazing. Mm. Yeah, see? Incredible. Yeah. And DJ Ronnie G says, I thought about asking Crit if I could do a voice, but I don't think he has a Homestar Runner alien. Well, you could be a Jawa. Just do turtle. Be. He might he might need you for some turtle sounds or something, DJ. So. Oh, there we go. Turtle. <laughs> no, we might need him to basically be Data Carvey saying, Am I too turtly? Am I not turtly enough for the turtle club? Gosh, that movie is terrible. You see, you see, what you could do is you can have turtles in there and mock Disney by saying, Well, you guys didn't have dinosaurs. I have turtles. Larry Rose is saying hello to Spock. Mm -hmm. Also, Spock. To Anonymous. 
Hey, I know Moth. I'm seeing high too. And Everest is saying, Rogue got butt surgery in the X-Men. No, it's just modern Disney. No curves. No curves. We can't, we can't have women with curves. We can't have guys looking big and buff and tough. And... Uh-huh. <laughs> I like so. boobs and butt. Mm-hmm. On women. Mm-hmm. It's okay, Baron. We won't judge you. It's all right. Please don't and judge and Spock <laughs> says we all need to stream some Vertex, good old freeform combat fighting game with lightsabers. I can customize some weapons, and all right, I'm I'm always down with doing things with you, Spock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And let's see, what do you think about the new con? X Godzilla or Khan Godzilla. I don't know. I saw the trailer and it just wasn't mm-hmm. pulling me in. Me either. Nope. And I, I think part of that reason being is because when I watched Godzilla versus Khan, and I even said this after I watched it and reviewed it, that I didn't care for the human characters. I wanted to see more kaiju. I wanted to see them fighting. I didn't want to see the movie, you know, go from Khan and Godzilla back to the humans and then back to Khan and Godzilla. I wanted it to be all about Khan and Godzilla. The, the less humans, the better, in my opinion. There we go. I, I mean, I, that's what I say about life. But did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. I'm so very, very sorry. And DJ Ronnie G says, I played Vertex a on a couple occasions with at Spox Friday nights, it was pretty fun. And visually heard of it. as the Vulcans would say. Mm. How logical. Spock says, Glad you have fun. I will be hosting tournaments soon mm. with a money reward. Woo! That, that sounds right up Cash's alley. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Mm-hmm. And Crit says Godzilla versus Khan focused more on the kaiju than it did on the last two. People forget ah, it didn't focus enough, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, though, Crit. You know how it is. Yeah, that's why we have that uh, disclaimer. Mm hmm. I hated Godzilla 2019 because you wanted to see King Ghidorah, Mothra, and Godzilla, but all you see is Millie Bobby Brown crying and show debris and shit flying in your face and hiding the action. Yeah, it wasn't very good. It wasn't very good at all. It sounds like they're trying to be artistic. But you're, you're not seeing the art, Mike. Oh, yeah, yeah, see the art. No. Oh, the, the special effects were supposed to be that way because you know, for a fact, you know, it's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason behind the reason why they look so crappy. <laughs> when it comes to Godzilla opinions, I keep quiet unless some really wants to hear mine. I don't have the most popular take away from the modern movies. Hmm. We should have crit and him yeah. debate. That'd be cool. Your opinion's welcome to your Spock. Oh, yeah. Especially if it shoots Crit's uh, blood pressure up a little bit. <laughs> uh, Barrett, he's always tried to cause trouble. Uh, he's not, always, uh, you, you know what, Barrett? Look, you're the star hmm. scream of the group. You, you're you the star scream hmm. of the group. You're always trying to get everyone else going after each other so you can finally have your leadership. Have I ever denied <laughs> that? <laughs> Have I ever denied that? What what sadly, image did I take no. when I did the show? Sadly, uh, no. Yeah, and for the watch party, what image did I use? What image? Star screen. Star screen. Oh, oh, That's darn. I'm saying that you you, yeah. you really are a star screen. Yeah, I took the avatar off. I I should probably put it back on again. Oh, by the way, a little bit off the subject here. Catch, catch. You keep on asking. I I'm through fully. 
the first season of of one of uh, Sword Art Online. Oh well, I've asked the Gun Gals one. I understand. Oh, you, it's a constant one. I'm surprised you uh -huh. haven't asked it today, but uh -huh. yeah, I got sure. to now. Sure, the, Karen, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I, I know honestly, I was about to turn yeah. it off and yell at you because you know when they did the tranny thing in there, uh, I thought, what are you trying to do? Are you pushing? Uh, what are you pushing here, man? They turned oh, the guy boy. into a gal. <laughs> no. What is this, man? I thought I thought the anime wasn't into Baron, all this, man. Baron Star Scream. <laughs> Baron Scream. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it, Baron. Uh, Dude, it's a uh, no. It's a uh, like I said. The, a lot of the situations in that show are mm -hmm. uh, are something that could actually happen in real life, which is pretty. Oh scary. yeah, mm -hmm. especially when you're dealing with uh, MM, you know, MMOs. But I, I I love how they ripped off Star Wars so far. It's like, Did yeah. they? They ripped off Star Wars. <laughs> and what you you you've seen One Piece? I'm not One Piece, but I'm Sword Art Online. Yeah, right? I'm in the gun one. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Oh, you oh, you mean the yeah. lightsabers? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, lightsabers. yeah. It's quite obvious, mm -hmm. but yeah, they're I still know. cool, right? I mean Oh, they're so cool. The I, I appreciate. Yeah, yeah. It. And they even make the same sound. They make yes. the same sound. Yes. So it's like, Woo! Yep. And Glissor fan 444 has a question for us over on Rumble. Are oh, you hi, guys Rumble. WWE are you guys WWE fans? Well, I used to watch it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. This was from the 80s to 2014, and then I just gradually stopped watching. Mm -hmm. And I, I grew up in the state of the AWA, so, I mean, we have people like Baron Von Raschke, Jesse the Body Ventura, uh, and, of course, you know, Vern <laughs> Gagne, his kid, uh, nor the barbarian, all these guys, it, 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 it creeps in. You you know about it even if you don't watch it. Mm -hmm. But again, that was a long time ago. Unfortunately, Vern is gone. And uh, Baron Von Rash, well, he used to run a uh, uh, a knickknack shop up, I think, in Brainerd or Bemidji, something like that. You know, famous lake to go to for Minnesotans. And uh, Jesse, he, Jesse just fell off the, well, he, he just fell off the wagon. Uh, I can tell you about this conspiracy here. Follow me on the chalkboard here and the corkboard, <laughs> and I'll show you everything. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I'm glad you could do the impression, Barry, because I can't do it to save my life. Yeah. Well, I had a little practice making fun of Jess. Like I guess I know I I wasn't friends or I I I even be strong to say acquaintances, but we've met several times. So. <laughs> well, it's um, uh, yeah, you you did say that, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I think the last time I really cared about uh, wrestling was Raw. That was like early two thousands. Yeah. Oh, I thought when you were when you were Raw. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Oh, wow. what a weird area there for a moment. Are, 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 you, are you taking this to a place I, I don't want to take it? I don't know. No, I was wondering if the cat yeah. was. I was scared the cat was. What do you mean? No, you you were you were me. scaring us. You were scared. Don't blame me, man. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> and Chris says WWE is fun to follow now. And Spock is the same here. I stopped watching WWE in 2012. Basically, I stopped after the first WrestleMania match between John Cena and The Rock. Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. What? And why do we take Crick's opinion? Why do we take mm -hmm. Crick's opinion serious at all? I mean, honestly, it's fun now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that that does lead us into our first story here that we are. Going I'm to be kidding, Crick. By the way, I'm kidding, Crick. <laughs> no, he's serious. <laughs> he knows you well enough, Baron. Yeah, the last thing I need is an angry orca knocking my boat over on on uh, Pelican Lake Pelican. So yeah. that's right. All you want to yeah. do is do some fishing, and you know you got this yeah, orca yeah. just trying to attack you. It's crazy. Where the hell did this orca come from? No man. And Gilsor fan four 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 wants to know what we think about Vince McMahon. Well, if these mm -hmm. allegations we are true, we do not <laughs> yes, know if they're. They're true, but if they exactly. are true, he deserves to serve time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're false, that's a completely different story, mm -hmm. right? 
And even if they are, he's going to have a hard road because of shenanigans that he was involved with in the past. And that's the mm -hmm. one thing. And uh, again, you know, it doesn't look good because of his history. And it's going to be easy for people to instantly damn him. I mean, it's easy for us, you know, to go out there and damn him because of, what, of all that. But we have to remind ourselves, everyone has their day in court. So mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I mean, actually, for once, he might be innocent and they're using his uh, reputation against him. Or uh, who knows? I, I don't know. We'll have to find out when the yeah. day it comes. It's not like in the case of Alec Baldwin where he has a history of having mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kill, killing people on the set of movies. He's had a strong history of that. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I wouldn't say he has a strong history of doing that on film other I than know. what's happened on Russ, but I, I'm talking about his overall attitude. Oh, yeah. What, what's, I mean, what's known about him oh. from his past exploits. I mean, just, just, you know, being a parent, you know, I even heard before I was a parent, but even as a parent, hearing how he was talking to his daughter, Christ. Yeah, that was not good. No. Right. No, and it, honestly, this isn't good either, if it actually happened, but let's find out what Ronda Rousey had to say about Vince McMahon in her memoir. She... Calls him Emperor Palpatine in her new memoir. Ooh. This is by J.P. Augustine. It was posted on the 22nd. And it says, if Ronda Rousey has ever been accused of pulling punches, that is a fabricated charge because she isn't holding back on her former employer, WWE, or the upper management, save for a select few. In her I memoir, see. Our Fight... She has pointed things to say about the Wrestling Federation's disgraced ex-chairman, Vince McMahon, whom Rousey compares to Palpatine from Star Wars movies. However, she started with nice things to say about his daughter, Stephanie McMahon, and son-in-law, Paul Triple H Levisque. I'm always wow. going to just refer to him as Triple H. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I got to sit back and say, I'm glad she named it that and not my struggle. Yeah. <laughs> this NXT. Yeah. NXT was founded by and under the control of Triple H. Real name Paul. I'm sorry, it's Paul Levesque. Wow, what it keeps saying Levesque. Mm. But it's Paul Levesque. In addition to being my in rain WrestleMania nemesis, he is arguably one of the best professional wrestlers in history and one of the better people on the business side, Rousey said in a snippet from her memoir provided by Cage Side Seats. He is married to Stephanie McMahon, who was the daughter of WWE's Emperor Palpatine, Vince McMahon, Rousey continued. Vince took over the company from his father in the early 1980s and spent the better part of 40 years playing a rural world pro wrestling version of Monopoly, buying up and absorbing smaller promotions until he basically owned them all. Yet, yeah, every wrestling fan knows that information. I, I'm not saying that to be smug or anything. I'm, I'm saying... As a wrestling fan, we all know that information. Take oh, it he's a the Matt Wrestling of, of wrestling, huh? <laughs> uh, he's Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. Taking a jab at his on-screen Hill persona, she added, it's hard sometimes to know where the evil, unethical, slimeball character of Vince McMahon played out for the camera ends and the actual questionably ethical many times sued and multiple times accused of sexual misconduct Vince McMahon begins. Well, Rhonda, there's a thing about the wrestling business. When you know, man or woman creates a wrestling character, there's a little bit of their actual personality in that mm -hmm. character. Mm-hmm. 
it's been that way for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it's about anyone who takes on a role, mm -hmm. I'd say. Uh, not, not saying that the actor, you know, if they're playing a bad guy, uh, they are. No, it's just that they're able to cut loose and bring out maybe a more flamboyant side of, mm -hmm. of themselves uh, to play. And, uh, and if there's one thing I have to sit back and say, I have to confess, I was amused by his antics on the screen. You know, Vince McMahon, mm -hmm. you know, what role he plays. But, you know, maybe it was more truth than acting. Who knows? I don't know. More truth than fiction. Right. Mm -hmm. And before I continue, I do want to acknowledge this. So, here we go. All right. Put the money in the bag. I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> we have a ten dollar <laughs> super chat from Spock's Friday nights. He says, "In space, no one can hear you scream, but Vulcans can always hear your logic." Live long and prosper, Pacific. Congrats again on two K subs. Can't wait to play some Firestorm with you, Cash and Baron. Oh. That's gonna be fun. Oh, that, there we go. That, and, that's gonna uh, be fun. And, and also Hell Divers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And but and I just have to say thank you for that uh, for that super chat. Now Cash and I will get paid for this month. <laughs> thank you all mm -hmm. so very much. Your support of this channel is greatly appreciated. And I've mentioned it before. I don't mention it very often, and I I don't ask for super chats because I, I think if I come on here asking for super chats, you think you're. You're only about the money, Mike. No, I'm not. But any super chats that I do receive, I will put it toward the channel. So if there's a new game coming out that everybody wants me to stream, well, guess what? That's where the money is going to go, toward that game. Cash, I don't think we're getting our two cents this month. <laughs> when it comes to you, too, I'm more like the Ferengi. Yeah, you know, you're like Mr. Crab. We have to pay to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Bob, SpongeBob pays to work at the Krusty Crab. <laughs> That's right, the Pack 414, brother. That's what we are, the Pack. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh. And, and Spock admits it. I did it to hear the I'll buy that for a dollar again. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, the SpongeBob part but, um, is quite hysterical. I'm, I'm <laughs> guessing Helldivers 2 looks pretty interesting to you, right, Baron? It does. Yeah, it actually okay. does. You know, you know, it looks like, uh, well, you know, some of it looks like Fallout means, uh, meets uh, Starship Poopers, Troopers, Troopers, so. Troopers. Poopers. <laughs> Poopers. Yeah, uh, Poopers. Yeah. And I'm going to do this in my best Ferengi voice. They each get one slip of platinum. No Ooh, more. That's a lot. One slip. That's a lot. I mean, you know, when it comes to us, that's a lot. <laughs> well, that's okay. Cash uh, has got his money bin. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's what he's swimming in. I got to keep it away show. from the. I got to keep it away from the Beagle Boys. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, he's been, he, yeah, he's been, you know, basically supporting me. I think, goodness, he knows. Oh, okay. He feels bad for me and saw me in the soup kitchen, and mm -hmm. so he put me in a one room flop house and uh, one, room. you know, yeah, at so least like, two bedroom. Come on, man, it's a flop house. <laughs> what do I need two bedrooms for? Okay. Right? Me and the cockroaches having a party at night. Da, 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 da. I've had fun doing solo matches in Hell Divers, but I can't wait to actually team up and mm -hmm. battle some bugs. <laughs> we can all oh, find God. a goal and oh, God, 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 destroy God. some bugs. I'm behaving. I'm behaving. Yeah. I'm behaving. Yeah, you behave yourself, Baron. I know where you're going <laughs> with that dirty mind of yours. <laughs> I, me, me too. And back to the article, Rousey also took aim at WWE's deal with Saudi Arabia. To bring events to the kingdom, saying pay-per-views are held in major cities like New York, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, as 
well as now twice a year in Saudi Arabia, a nation that restricts right, the rights of women in a way that I'm certain Vince McMahon wishes he could. Wow. Wow. Well, oh. you, you, you know, I, I know, I know. Someone's going to say you're siding with Vince on this. Vince is looking for the money. So yeah. Saudi Arabia is offering him plenty of money to do two shows a year. Mm -hmm. over there. What, what do you think Vince is going to do? He's a businessman. When he was yeah. running WWE, he's looking for the best deal, or as they would say in an angle for a while, that was still part of WWE. When I was watching it up to 2014, he's doing what's best for business, best for his bottom line. Just like right. Ronda Rousey does what's best for her bottom line. Anybody who's out there in front of the camera entertaining or they're on stage entertaining, they're doing what's best for their bottom line. Right. Well, but she does know, have the... she does have a nice bottom line, but when it comes to it, what, what I'd have to sit back and say is in this situation, he's immoral. You know, because that's what you are in business. You are immoral. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's uh you know, it's all about the money. If there's any passion, it's about the green. So it's mm -hmm. immoral. He doesn't care. Yeah. I mean, I mean I if it was cockfights yeah. down in uh in Chihuahua, Mexico, he'd be involved in it. It's just it's just disappointing to me about Ronda Rousey because she used to, uh, you know, she was basically, it's like, oh, if you care anything about MMA and you don't even like it all that much, but you're, you're looking for interesting fighters. She was an interesting fighter. And then when she had yeah. her meltdown and stuff, and I know people go through things, but it was just like, eh, now you're doing WWE. It seems like a, a downgrade for me, but you know, yeah. if that's what makes her happy, that's what makes her happy. But, you guys remember that whole thing a few years ago, at least. I think it was before mm -hmm. COVID. She just, she went on when she was on Ellen that time, and we know what happened. Yeah, right, what right. happened with yeah. Ellen? But I just, I was just like, eh, I mean, I guess if it makes you happy, you know. But she yeah. was literally the face of female, M the the face uh, of female. She MMA was. She was I, I would even argue that she was one of the main reasons people were buying mm -hmm. UFC mm -hmm. pay-per-views. I can certainly admit that she was one of the reasons why my co-workers and I used to go to this restaurant that showed the UFC pay-per-views on Saturday nights <laughs> and right. watch them. Yeah. She was the main reason why we would go. She, I'm she not going to say what... she wasn't. Mm -hmm. She didn't know what to do when she lost. It was like she just collapsed. She, well, yeah. she just didn't her, her, know what whole, to do. Her whole world mm -hmm. came mm -hmm. down around her when mm -hmm. she lost. Yep, she couldn't handle it at all. And it so just... she goes on the Ellen, the Ellen's mm -hmm. eye humping her while she's complaining. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's like, well, I mean, you know, even Muhammad Ali lost the fight. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. of even even Tyson lost the fight. Of course. I mean, it, 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 you, you, no, no, you're never going to have a 100% perfect career mm -hmm. unless you go out there, have one fight, win, and, and announce that I'm retired. Right. How are you going to deal with defeat, you know? And if you can't right. deal with it and then you went into acting and stuff, I mean, she probably would have gone into acting anyways, but it's just, it's like, oh, I'm in WWE now. It's like, uh, you know, just, uh, I mean, uh, whatever you do to make you happy, fine. But, but. but but here's the thing. She did have some small roles in some movies, even before mm -hmm. signing mm -hmm. with WWE. It, it was right. while yeah. she was in UFC. Mm -hmm. Well, when did she do the Expendables movie? Was that before the wrestling? Uh, I, I, I think it was. That was before the wrestling. Maybe. That was yeah. while she was still in and, UFC. Yeah. yeah, and that wasn't that wasn't a small role either. I wouldn't call that a small role. And, uh, yeah. I don't no, know why she, never... she had a small role. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the thing is that she was already getting noticed, and that's you know, Sly was more than happy to put her in a bigger role in that one. And uh, mm. I don't know why she didn't keep up with the expendable stuff. It seems like uh, you know. I mean, her role in Fast and the Furious wasn't bad. I mean, I think that's the only thing I said. And then of course she became the face of Sonya for some reason in Mortal Kombat, but whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, and whether she was on Max in, in Maxim, so I mean, she knows she's a good looking lady. That's her yeah, she was. That's right. She was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, she you know, had her you, you time still in the limelight. That, yeah, and you, you still have your time in the limelight if you didn't, uh, uh, you mm -hmm. know, do what you did. I mean, 
Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, hey, you exactly. know, sometimes I go, okay, I got my ass kicked this time. Right. But, you so know, what I am I going to do this. differently? Right. Exactly. Yeah. What What am mm-hmm. I going to do to get better again? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where do I go from here? Here's the thing. Any Any of us, you know, someone beats us, mm-hmm. and you know, we sit back, we collect ourselves, we watch what our next opponent does or if we're having a rematch we Mm -hmm. watch what our opponent does and take notes Mm -hmm. to make sure that we don't make the same mistake twice Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well you know if you have to call your mommy call your mommy (laughs) Mommy. no but no i mean that's me even when we're gaming gaming i mean Mm-hmm. Yo, I mean, how many times? How many times would you have our butts handed to us <laughs> gaming mm-hmm. with the computers? I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and and me starting on Friday, going, "All right, Cash. All right, Dad." <laughs> when Cash says, "You guys mm-hmm. got to do better. We got to do better, guys." Okay, Dad. <laughs> yeah, Dad. Yeah, hopefully and, on for, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you still refuse to admit that they increased the difficulty. I think Yeah, 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 he does. I I think uh, they have. I, don't I know. think they I'm have. not hundred percent sure oh, on oh, that. Idea. Listen to this guy. Listen to this guy, Barry. Because no, he, I read the more... patch notes and they didn't say anything about increasing the difficulty. Uh, so. Right, right. Yeah, Cash is happy being a loser, folks. No. That's I mean, we we made some good progress last week. I just want to get that back <laughs> five done, man. It's pretty tough. That last boss is pretty well, tough. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. It is. Yeah. But uh no, I mean, you know they're not necessarily gonna put everything in there saying that you no. Know. They sh- they could at least say that if they did. <laughs> oh, of course hey, they could, Cash, but man. Yeah. Oh, it's it's more hammer. What what have any of these companies been up front with the public? Uh, sometimes, hey. not always. <laughs> Cash, remember, yeah. this is Warhammer. This is the Games Workshop. Remember their model. I don't want my pain taken away. I need my pain. Well, I'm. Okay. I thought that was my model. I, mean, I, I I like the fact that we have the game. Some games out there that are rewarding, just like Dark Souls. I would say, and yeah. punishing. But if they're rewarding yeah. and punishing, that that's good because like once you complete something you're like oh wow i really feel i did some good work here that's awesome well dark tide vermin tide i mean both those are tough but rewarding uh as, as you go along and that's it's great you know it's like mm. why do you want to just walk through what it, it, and and just breeze through it and go you know and, mm-hmm. and get the participation trophy you know you want to feel like you earned this Mm-hmm. That's why I never do the, the you know, you see the people in the games and they pay for, basically pay to win on these, uh, you know, tablet games, you know, the, mm. you know, the it's microtransaction not, games. It's like, why? It's not worth it. You can spend some money, but you should feel like you want to work for something. Even when you buy a collector's edition and you get all this right. stuff, it's like, well, what can I do to work for other stuff? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, that's one thing, but I'm talking about, you know, mm-hmm. uh, building up an army so tough, you're, you're, you're buying, you're right. buying the victory type of stuff. I'm not talking yeah, about, you know, I you know. get something nice oh, yeah. and, mm-hmm. and now what do I do with it type of thing? And you have well, to, you know, it just you know, doesn't always help too. I mean, the pay to win, it's just like, if you want to make mm-hmm. command and conquer and some of this other stuff pay to win, it doesn't work. Like as other people point out, it's like, I work like half the time or whatever, like I'm going, and then I come home and then I'm being beaten by some teenager who has too much time on their hands. And that's a fair argument. It really is. It's like, yeah, you can't do that. It's just not going to mm-hmm. work. It's not going to work no. very well. Just going to make me frustrated. Anyone doesn't know who Ninja is. He's actually one of Twitch's largest mm-hmm. streamers. I oh, think no. he moved from Twitch. I don't know if he went back to Twitch, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't yeah, know if he's gone just... back to Twitch, but I know mm-hmm. at one time he was one of Twitch's largest streamers. Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't know who Ninja was, so but you know, yeah. sorry to hear about that. I hope it, yeah, yeah, he oh, got oh, oh good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He got popular because of Fortnite, if I remember. I think that's what the, the game made him popular, if I remember. Well, who does it? That's what we should do. We should do Fortnite, then we'll bring No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make crit happen. We can't make him that happy. I, no, no, we can't make him that happy. That's our model. I'll end up rage, I'll end up rage quitting. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. 
I tried uh, playing it with my daughters, and it's like, this is a stupid I mean, I, my opinion, by the way, folks, this is a stupid game. You know, all these people hopping around, and it's like, come on, building all this stuff right in front of you. Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Not enough blood. Mm -hmm. And Spock says, I hope he takes some time to settle down with his family and get through the rough time. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's probably what's going to be the best move for him. But you never know. And maybe it's the streaming that'll help him too. Yeah, usually it does. You know, uh, you know, definitely spend time with the family. Don't ignore them. But, uh, you know, if, if, if playing the games and all that helps through this time, uh, you know, let, let it be so, you know, just enjoy all aspects. And, you know, it's, you know, he's battling it. Doesn't mean he's going to go. So I hope that means he's no. not going to go. Uh, so, I mean, that's the no, I, I mean, skin cancer, you can usually get yeah. rid of, you know, as long as it doesn't mm -hmm. spread, of course. But yeah, it should mm -hmm. be. Well, that's the big thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, getting back to this Ronda Rousey story, oh. it says mm -hmm. the former women's champion also called out the company's treatment of its female roster over the years. WWE loves to do well-produced video segments about the legacy of women within the organization. But the mm -hmm. truth is, women have largely been footnotes. For the longest time, they were relegated to serving male characters in a valet role. An overly sexualized supporting character that takes cheap shots when the ref isn't looking, she began. Except for Miss Elizabeth when she was in the WWF in the 80s. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people loved her. A right. lot of people loved her. But then again, you know, what was the wrestling aimed for? It was aimed for, towards men. It and, was aimed towards but, men and young uh -huh. boys. Uh -huh. Right. Especially back in the 80s. And, the and 80s remember. And superheroes. Because that's mm -hmm. what some people refer to the WWE at the time when it was known as WWF World Wrestling Federation. That it was basically your comic book superheroes come to life mm -hmm. in the wrestling ring. And, you know, for especially for a woman here that loves to show off her body. And, you know, obviously, you know, she has a reason to. I mean, you know, look at what great shape. But, again, she's more than happy to show off her goods. Mm-hmm. Oh, so how, how many how many boys found their manhood with that Maxim magazine? Good point. Mm -hmm. Over time, as the level of female talent grew and society as a whole started to shift, the organization gradually expanded the role of female wrestlers. Rousey wrote, WWE bills itself as a sports entertainment organization, and just like in mainstream entertainment industry, there was, by all accounts, a casting couch culture where men backstage in powerful positions pressured female talent for sexual favors in return for airtime. Mm. I don't doubt that, but mm. remember, we also, but I don't on, doubt the, it on, the, flip, on <laughs> the flip side, on the flip side, we also heard where some of the men, male ones, were getting the same treatment. And so, not remember, in the, Here's one thing to remember about Vince McMahon. He's always like the guys that have the bodybuilder look. That's mm -hmm. his ideal wrestler. When you look yep. at Hulk Hogan, when you look at the late Ultimate Warrior, you mm -hmm. look at those guys' physiques. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of physique he prefers in his wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Macho Man, Ventura, all those guys, mm -hmm. yeah. And which is why you got that uh, the stupid... Uh, steroid thing going because they wanted you wanted to have that look mm -hmm. remarking on the scandals that recently went public rousey alluded to more that was probably covered up there were so many public accusations and scandals it's hard to keep track and more that i'm sure the wwe management WWE managed, not management, Mike, come on, managed to sweep under the rain, she explained. Oh, what organization hasn't swept things under the rug? Heck, mm -hmm. anybody remember Enron? Hmm. Never and heard of the it. The crap they pulled? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, think of all the stuff that we had to cover up here at Pacific Four One Four. I mean, mm. yeah. very funny, very funny. Why you're a wise guy? <laughs> well, you know, even if I am the major cause of it, but that's beside the point. Oh boy, well, we can't take Baron anywhere, Cash. Nope. Nope. Oh, always have to keep an eye on him when he starts wandering. Get back here. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Come on, yeah, man. You've been, talk you've been talking to the wife, haven't you? <laughs> yes. That's the that's him in the bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> Vince McMahon was removed from the board of WWE's new parent company, TKO, after the allegations in Janelle Grant's sex trafficking lawsuit against him and the company came to light. It's believed he is gone for good and according to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, no one wants him back. Yeah, I think even if he is innocent, nobody wants him back. Much better. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. As far as being a wrestling promoter, having anything to do with wrestling, I don't think, regardless of the outcome of this case, we'll ever see Vince McMahon again. Mm -hmm. I don't never say never, but in this yeah. case, I don't think we'll see him ever again. Mm -hmm. People who were even in a situation where they'd been defending other people in the company, nobody bothers to try and defend Vince to me. It's almost like they've thrown in the towel on him. It's like he's gone and we can't even try to defend him, Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio via NoDQ.com. Rousey took one last swipe at the wrestling industry in the passage from her memoir when she declared its foundational problems are sexist and patriarchal. Presented this information as a person outside of the wrestling world you might draw the conclusion that there is a troubling foundational sexist patriarchal excuse me, culture within WWE. You might be right. Guess what, Rhonda? Guess what? It's always been there. Does it mean it's right? No, it doesn't mean it's right, right. but it's always been in that business. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked. L Absolutely shocked. It's just, but the, the problem is with all the, the different companies when there is like sexual harassment going on, the, 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 <laughs> the thing that they want to do is they always go to the extreme. They don't start fixing the problem step by step. They always go to the extreme. We have to change everything. Look at what happened with the beauty pageants, for example. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was probably stuff going on. I'm not saying there wasn't. But what they do is they go to the extreme. Now we have to change everything. Now it's this. Now it's that. We can't have the 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 bikini contest with the swimwear. We can't have this. And they start fixing all these things that they think they are, and it just make turns people off, you know. And that they, they go crazy with this stuff instead of saying, yeah. "Let's look at this rationally. Let's find the people who are actually doing this and make an example of them, and make sure that we do not have them around anymore." Well well, one, when you're talking about like the beauty patch and all that, it gave the opportunity to the people who hate them in the first place mm -hmm. and don't right, care to right. and, and exactly, want to see them Baron. destroyed. Exactly. So they're going to go of out course, there and do of that. Of course, yeah. Uh, but everything so, has to be the extreme, man. It, it, they can't well, just start doing it steps by step by another step and then figuring out what they can do from there and getting rid of the people who are really causing the problems. Because all we do is just, it's general. It's well, everybody. No, that's the that's a huge problem in itself also. It's not everybody. It's certain people that are making everybody else look bad. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the sad thing, the sad thing when it comes around to, uh, you know, these, uh, uh, these abuse situations, anything to do in that area Everybody has a hard time because of just that negative connotation. Mm -hmm. They they want to sweep it under because they don't want to have it right. come out in light that right. uh, they have this issue in their company because you know look how like you were saying uh, people come down sometimes unnecessarily so hard on on an industry or or, or a group or mm -hmm. 
or whatnot that mm -hmm. you know it's hard for them to recover from that right uh right. so of course they sweep it under of course what happens when they do that uh uh people don't get what they deserve uh mm -hmm. because obviously you're not being brought forward into the light of the law because that's the last thing they want mm -hmm. we don't need this uh tarnishing our image and yeah that's a bad thing just because something like this happens in a group or is uh pandemic for the whole thing mm -hmm. we all know that I mean, there, there's always going to be a bad apple no matter what that does something mm -hmm. right whether it's in a religious organization political organization yes. whether yes. it's uh whether it's in a company if it's in you know tech uh boy scout girl scout it doesn't mm -hmm. matter mm -hmm. uh they don't want these things out and no. they tried to hide it and right. for the wrong, you know, I, and obviously out of fear, it's not mm -hmm. right. But the thing is, it's also not right to go after him with pitchforks and torches as well. If right. it's not, if it's not the norm, if it's the norm. Yeah. I mean, that's different, but mm -hmm. when it's not the norm, exactly. it's like, you know, they're sometimes as much of a victim and that because of the, the you no know, that association stigma that gets put onto them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's not a good thing all the way around. It isn't. Mm -hmm. And and people need to also think that if you think men can't be sexually harassed, even by other men, which there was some stuff yeah. going on in Naughty Dog, and I noticed after a little while that was brushed under a rug. But there was a right. story out there about that. Uh, you know, it can happen to men too. Obviously, I believe yeah. it happens to women a lot more. But it can oh, yeah. definitely happen to men, too. And people d don't think that, oh, men can't be sexually harassed. And there's actually people out there, Baron and Mike, that think that, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's stupid. Mm -hmm. And just like I said earlier, uh, the, the allegations coming down from that wrestling organization, it wasn't just the women. It was also some of the male ones that were mm -hmm. getting, mm -hmm. you know, you know, all, all that uh, all that fun stuff. So. Uh, that, I mean, that's what the allegations were, and again, things got swept under. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's not, you, it's not a good thing. We're not, never going to fix problems, man, until we start looking at a lot of things rationally. If we can't do that, then, and we go to the extreme, it's always going to go to hell. And then they wonder why they lo lose money, and they wonder why people, like, they're just not getting the support anymore, because people are tired of it. Like you've got, if you're going to fix things and start fixing things, even stuff right. like FIFA, Baron, just a different oh, situation. God. There was so much corruption. They had, they brought yeah. in this woman. I can't remember her name. I don't know if she's still there, but she started actually fixing things. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if it's a man, a woman, you identify as something else, whatever. The The thing is you, if you serious about caring about the situation, you need to look at, look at it, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> rationally. And then you need to go from there, but you cannot go to the extreme. And we've seen that time and time again oh, yeah. in history that it's just not going to work out. Yeah, let's not forget the Olympic Committee had that they've had uh -huh. their share. But you know what's That's, actually yeah. the biggest thing in this whole matter uh, that would be the big help? If you don't like something, go away. And by right. what I mean yep. is, like right. I said earlier, uh, there are segments of the community that view. A situation like this as their opportunity to sweep in and uh, and try to destroy something they don't like exactly because you know they don't they don't like it for whatever reason just for the fact that maybe men are having a good time i mean it's you know yeah you got people like that out there right mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. when it comes down to it you don't like it there's a you know there's a, there's the channel selector there's the off button there's whatever you don't have to watch it it's not mm -hmm. made for you Right, exactly. and don't be don't be insulted by that. Uh, that no. it was not made for you because you know there, there's a lot of things. You know, let's face it, most of the rom coms are aimed at what women. women. The guys just go, guys just go along and pretend they're having a good time in hopes that they get lucky afterwards. I mean, um, that can happen, but some of these rom coms can be funny. It just depends on the direction. And of course, yeah. you have low uh, low test, uh, testosterone levels like Cash. You enjoy them. So like, uh, you know, no. just like you enjoy, <laughs> just like you enjoy friends, but that's beside the point. 
Yes. Oh, what are the reasons? You can hate, I, you can hate I, friends I all you watching. want, Mister. <laughs> Go hiding in your your shack over there. <laughs> what One of the reasons Building I stopped watching model. <laughs> WWE in 2014 is because the storylines just weren't entertaining. Right. As mm-hmm. wrestling storylines go, I know some people might say, well, that's not really much, Mike. But really, I started losing interest in the storylines. I started losing interest in the product. I Yeah, I did go to a SmackDown taping that year. had a good time with a couple of buddies of mine. and mm-hmm. But overall, the product itself was suffering. I even tried giving AEW a chance. And, you know, for a while there, it it was entertaining. I'm mm-hmm. not going to say it wasn't. Yeah. Mike got piled dry by uh, Roddy Roddy Piper, you know, as an guest. <laughs> Boom. You know? He was, he was well, watching wrestling that, and that, everything was going fine. And then the wrestler came through the wall. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, speaking of Rowdy Roddy Piper, mm-hmm. I am still glad that me and my same buddy who went to the 2014 SmackDown taping, we went to one in 2012. Mm-hmm. And Piper was on that show. So it was mm-hmm. good to see him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, remember, you're showing that video. That's why I brought up Brody by Piper. See, I pay attention to these things. I'm like, yeah. When, when, um, he's, when he's not hiding in his shack and being, help, help, I'm being repressed. And he's hoping so. I am being repressed. I am being repressed. <laughs> uh, but, right, Derek. But no. Right. but you know but you know it it comes down to that factor again in all seriousness is Mm -hmm. if you don't like it you know the things are geared and just like you know going back with you know cash thing yeah there's good rom-com yeah there's been that like it and it's nothing against them there's been that like soap opera right uh you know Mm -hmm. and watches the soaps and Mm -hmm. but it's not geared in them and yeah you had women watching wrestling in the day Right. Even though it wasn't necessary, but they liked it. There's and, some women and, who watch monster truck rallies, I think, too. So, oh, yeah. I mean, that's, oh, that's hell yeah. obviously aimed at men. So, right. yeah. <laughs> and, but, and boys, yeah. right? Men yeah. and teenagers men, or whatever. Well, you know, really, men, boys, same thing, really, mm-hmm. when it comes to monster trucks. Let's put right, that, right. that way. Right. But, you know, again, it's one of these, I don't care. You know, I can have all the things geared for me, but you can't have yours attitude out there. Mm-hmm. And that needs mm-hmm. to go. Mm-hmm. Yes. Just like, you know, right. just like we have to protect other people's properties, even though we don't, don't necessarily like them or they're right. not your thing. Exactly. Um, I mean, like back, just to give an example, the one thing that really irked me watching uh, a, a, a stream, someone else's stream, there was when He-Man came out, the, the abomination by weeping Kevin Smith. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. And the one guy on there basically goes, I don't care about He-Man. What, are we, what, what does it matter? I don't like He-Man. What does it matter? It's like, you know, that's the big problem. You got the biggest problem right there. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, you can sit back and say, you know, He-Man's not my thing, but it needs to be. You know, that's one of the things where they mm-hmm. you drop a butt and it's a good thing you drop the mm-hmm. butt. Right. You know, because it's like we still need to defend it and um, and show solidarity because you got that attitude for other people, then why should they care about it when yours get destroyed? Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's you know, all the way across the board, you know. Uh, if you, uh, I if I don't like it, as long as it's not violating laws, our our yeah. laws of nature, sense of whatever, I, I I'll I'll be right there to protect, uh, you know, defend. Well, and, just, just mm-hmm. like when Akira Toriyama passed away, I'll admit I'm yeah. not a Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z fan, mm-hmm. yeah. but still, I I can be there with the Dragon Ball fans. In solidarity and help them more help right. them you know get through it why because right. there are fans out there who love the series because it is the way it is yeah and if you didn't watch dragon ball or you played dragon warrior or you played dragon quest um you know mm-hmm. it's just he's all he was all involved in that so yeah well yeah i mean it was a creative mind that gave people hours of entertainment and mm-hmm. 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 And and that's the thing, and you know, and harmless entertainment, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we have to we have to be we have to go. Okay, if it's not my thing, I'm not going to demand a change or or this. 
No. Uh, well, I can change why, the why, why should they change it for us who aren't a fan of that particular anime? Or why should right. anime in general have to change for us just because we're not a fan? Just because yep. it doesn't meet our mm -hmm. standards of entertainment. No, why, it doesn't why did... have to change. Exactly. Right. And they can change it themselves, but then, then when they lose money, it's like, well, you're you're not understanding what the old fans want. The reason well, that this has been going on for so many years is because they like the direction. And when you guys start changing things because you need it for a modern audience or whatever the hell you want to talk about, it's right. it's going to be a problem. And then you wonder well, why you lose money. Well, look mm -hmm. what they've done with Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who. There's a reason why the viewership of these things are dropping massively. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, honestly, uh, there's a reason why STD is being, and get this, folks, canceled, right? This show is supposed to be burning, you know, just hotcakes, right? Hotcakes. Oh, we're going to cancel it. Mm -hmm. Especially after, you know, messing around with a couple seasons because of budgeting, because it's not, you know, it's like, if this mm -hmm. thing was really, truly barn burner, it would be would not be gaining canceled. It'd be going out on its own terms, like uh, at least four Star Trek series out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, it's going out. Yeah. The reason why you're oh, exactly right. Sorry about that. But look, you're exactly know. right there. Look, right. look. Mm -hmm. Next Generation seven seasons, DS nine seven mm -hmm. seasons, Voyager right. seven seasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, up till then on, on their own terms. Yeah, mm -hmm. the original and. Mm -hmm. uh, and Enterprise didn't. And I suppose you could sit back and see mm -hmm. possibly even the, the animated, but I don't know the full stories on that there, you know, no. why it, and it did, you know, but stuff like that normally doesn't last that long. But what did they do? Let's change this for the trendies and the people who don't watch our stuff. Mm -hmm. The trendy, the trendy fans don't understand it. They saw it was that the people were doing this on uh, Big Bang Theory, so it's got to be cool. <laughs> and you talk to these people and you ask, uh, have you seen Star Wars? No, but I'm a Star Wars fan. Uh, I, you haven't seen any Star Wars? But... I, oh, I didn't surprisingly okay. have many conversations with people like that, Baron, with the whole thing. Oh, I saw Big Bang, so I watched Star Trek. <laughs> It's basically, that's what it is. I mean, <laughs> basically, that's what it is. I mean, I wish I could say I'm yeah. joking, but when you talk to these people and you ask, have you laugh. seen this? This No. No. But you know, Big Bang was a big hit, and you know, it mm. was you know showing us nerd culture and what happens. All of a sudden, us nerds are now you know are are now a, a, a thing. We're we're the we're the fashion scene or whatever. We're the the trope. Mm. Of, I don't know what you want to call it, but the flavor of the months. Well, the and funny you know, thing is, is even when they're like, "Oh, these you know, people here, are here, nerds." Here's what it here's what it is with, with these particular franchises. They all have a formula. That mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when someone new comes in and tries to change that formula, well, you ruin the recipe. Mm -hmm. Star Trek had a formula that worked for it. Star Wars had mm -hmm. a formula that yes. worked for it. Doctor yes. Who yeah. had a formula that works for mm -hmm. it. Transformers yeah. has a formula that works for it. Mm -hmm. right. And even Transformers, they've changed a little bit, and not for the better. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So. Right. So, I mean, that's that's that big thing. Again, you got people coming in, are they're listening to people that uh, that complain on Twitter who never watch it, ha, don't ever plan to, but they think, oh, this is our chance to spread our malicious anger and hate. And yeah, it's hate. Mm -hmm. These people are miserable, and they want to have other people miserable. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. And mm -hmm. uh, so, it, then of course, when you start uh, catering to the trendies out there, it's it's. You know what? What are you going to do? They don't understand what the property is. So when you sit back and say, "You know this isn't good," they'll jump down your throat and call you a non-fan, even though you follow this since day one. At least for me, day one, because I'm old enough. But uh, others, when mm -hmm. when they were able to get in, that's been around for you know what you call an old-time fan. We don't know what we're talking about. Or it's right. outgrowing us, or well, whatever. You know, this, this is a different I age, see grandpa. Right, like I want to see, you know, people have been started telling me about this X Men '97. I want to see the numbers from Disney. When when are they going to come mm -hmm. out? Okay, we've had three episodes so far, so far, yeah. Um, when are they going to come out? I want to see the numbers. I want to see how popular mm -hmm. this is. Oh, it got a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, I want to see yeah, the numbers. Care. Yeah. Well, they don't show numbers, though. They don't show numbers anymore. Oh, they they won't. That's the thing. Uh, they won't. 
I, I really want to see if you guys put your money where your mouth is on this one. Oh, it's so great. Uh, you hear from some, some people. Okay. I, I want to see the numbers though. Mm -hmm. Right. And real quick, I do want to say thank you to the 39 of you who are watching us tonight. Thank you so very much. 39? Oh, hi. Yeah, with, hi, everybody. Uh, on, on, on all platforms. On all platforms. Oh, I'm getting a little stage fright now. <laughs> <laughs> you are the... stage fright? Hardly. <laughs> I don't know, but the dogs somehow are uh, deciding to speak up about this. Well, well, they, they want to talk about the Legend of Zelda movie that's coming out. Yeah, they do? Oh, wow. That's amazing. Go get wow, it, Duchess. I mean, Go get it. Yeah, I... <laughs> How do you know it was Duchess? <laughs> Just guess. <laughs> so this article comes from Games Radar, and it says Legend of Zelda movie director teases awesome idea and says he wants to create something serious and cool, but fun and whimsical. Well, why can't you just <laughs> say you want to create something cool uh, yeah, and fun? Exactly. Yeah, serious. I don't know. Whims whimsical is very important too. Mm -hmm. I know. Really? Exclusive yeah. West Ball talks to Total Film about his vision for the Legend of Zelda movie. A live action Legend of Zelda movie is on the way from West Ball. And now that Maze Runner director has outlined his exciting vision for the upcoming Nintendo project. I have an awesome idea. Ball tells Total Film in our new issue out on Thursday, March 28th. So it comes up out tomorrow. Oh, wow. We're time travelers. And it Get features the fall guy on the cover. I've been thinking about it for a long freaking time of how cool a Zelda movie would be. I want to fulfill people's greatest desires. I know it's important, this Zelda franchise, to people. And I want it to be a serious movie, a real movie that can give people an escape. Well, there's a positive right there. Well, I mean... That's what even, movies and entertainment in general should be. An escape. Even, Right, but even if they're lost, I mean, there's even like parody rap songs that still follows the formula of Zelda that you could take and then just incorporate it into that. I mean, what was the movie Zelda supposed to be based on? Legend with um, with Tom Cruise, I think it's called, or yeah. Labyrinth. I, I can't remember which one it's it's called. I thought well, called uh, Tom Legend. Cruise was. I think Tom Cruise was Legend. Labyrinth yeah. was. Uh, right, that was the other one. Was yeah. the that was yeah David was Bowie right. I believe that's Labyrinth, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think that's yeah, yeah. Labyrinth was with Bowie and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those two. Because right, they said the that legend though is supposed to be what you know was created be that made that was the reason that Zelda was created, I guess. So mm -hmm. I haven't looked that deep into it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's fun, you know, it's fun taking Zelda out there and, and taking out the bad guys playing Zelda. Mm-hmm. I mean, Zelda's a cool character to play. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, the little uh, green well, hat well, and all that. Yeah. Well, Z Link is, yes. But, but, Link, yeah. uh, Link. Link. Say, it's Link. What's, <laughs> it's Link. What's Link? Yeah. Link's what's the, Link? the elf. Well, you're, Link's you're the, hero, the protagonist. Right. Right. Well, no, that's Zelda because it's the Legend of Zelda. So you're playing oh, Zelda boy. through that. You're the. <laughs> there the, oh, right? we go. No, 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 no. Oh, you know what, Here we go, Cash. Here we go. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Very interesting, but stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Remember that was the thing people would get confused who Link and and Zelda was. <laughs> I'm sure they did. I mean, I oh no, they did for real. But... People did. People thought yeah. Link was Zelda, and it's like, no, no, that's not. No, 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 no. You no. got that wrong. Here. <laughs> yeah. You're wrong. You're wrong. Well, <laughs> well, you're wrong. Well, you know what? Why are we saying it when we have a clip that we can play? Mm hmm. Uh, let's see. 
Well, I'll just use the hobby one. How many of you believe that having a hobby is a healthy and perfect way to express your individuality? Show of hands? No. Yay! Well, you're wrong. <laughs> it never gets old. It just does. I never does. No, I, I just <laughs> the disgust. I, I, just, I, I need to do one where it's just well, you're wrong, but you know <laughs> that disgust. That'll disgust that lot. <laughs> oh, it's great. <laughs> It finishes up in this article by saying Ball even points to the escapism. Oh, that, that, I'm sorry. I, uh, I need to sit here for a moment and uh, go. Did, did somebody who's a director at Hollywood say escapism? You mean I have to do something other than eat my mushrooms now? Cool. <laughs> I want to live in that world, he says. Well, and it's the driving force behind the Legend of Zelda movie. Listen, if you want to eat mushrooms, go play with Mario. Oh. Exactly. Cool. Yeah, there is no mushrooms in Zelda, but sure. Mm. That's the thing I want to try to create. It's got to feel like something real. Something serious and cool, but fun mm. and whimsical. Oh, boy. The Zelda movie, announced in November in a joint partnership between Nintendo and Sony Pictures, will bring to life a video game franchise that's thrived for almost 40 years. It will be 40 years old in 1986. Holy cow! Uh, yeah, not, not, well, well, from 1986, it'll be 40 years old in 2026. I, I knew what I wanted to say. It just came out wrong. Oh, I, I knew oh, what you were saying. But I was just still in shock. That it's like, I, I, hard, hard to believe it's been that long. I mean, honestly, yeah. it it it, uh, it boggles my mind legitimately. Yep. Uh, well, that's and I'm, the reason that it's, of course, one game of the year before a few years ago with Breath of the Wild mm -hmm. is it because it keeps expanding. And, right. um, you know, you just got to not listen to those people who are like, well, Zelda needs to be like this. And we need a game like where Zelda is the main character. It's like, well, there's other Zelda games like Hyrule uh, Warriors, mm -hmm. I think it was, um, that you can actually play a Zelda if you want to. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. it's a different type of game a bit. It's, it's yeah. not like your standard Zelda game. But yeah, I mean, once again, we've talked about this, guys. Let these developers, these creators, make what they want. You know, let them make what they want. And just yeah, I me. Mean, don't they know their properties? Them. Exactly. You know, the only thing I push them for is uh, is to be more uh, more creative with the properties to go along. Agreed. Don't get uh, don't get stagnant well, and uh, exactly. and, and just agree. go nuts. Go yes. nuts as long as it's your creation. You know, keep the, what your mm -hmm. creation is. It's like, yes. that's the only thing I get on them for. Is like, don't mm -hmm. don't get complacent. Yes. So, no, uh, don't. And, and does that mean that you might have a miss? Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, you tried. Exactly. I I think any of us when when a game has a miss, should sit back and go, you know, at least they tried, and that's mm -hmm. the important. Mm -hmm. yep. And I haven't played all the Zelda games. That are out there. I'm sure there are fans who could tell. <coughs> sorry, who could tell the three of us what games worked and what games they wish Nintendo would have gone back and had a redo. Yeah, some uh, I, I've played more than a handful of them and, and beaten some of them, but some things that they add in the Zelda games, the puzzles and stuff, some things are are just really frustrating to be frustrating mm -hmm. because Nintendo can be frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. So, Press Secretary. No problem. The article finishes up by saying often focusing on the tunic clad link. <coughs> Sorry. Freaking Paul. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. Tunic clad link in his battle against serious villain Ganon or other evildoers the series has sold over 150 million copies. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Its most recent entry, Tears of the Kingdom, was among the highest selling games of 2023. Before he gets to 
Grip with the Hero of Time, West Ball's new movie, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, is released on May 10th. Mm. And you can read more about it and a whole lot else besides in the new issue of Total Film when it, <coughs> sorry, it hit shelves and digital news stands on Thursday, March 28th. So again, tomorrow. Like we're a time machine. I like it. We're ahead of the news. We're ahead of you all. That's why you want to listen to Pacific 414. Mouse. P -p Pacific 414. Mouse? I, I don't recall. He that, just walked across my key. He, he just walked across my keyboard. Ah, I'm, I'm glad that uh, that didn't cause anything major. But but since, since you're saying that, Baron, you know, as far as it being the future, I'm going to play this. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You really are. You're going to see some serious shit. There's no joke. Yeah. That. Rick killed him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> With no, a oh, wrong that. clip. Wrong. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wrong <you laughs> clip. Wait a second here. <laughs> this guy. This guy. Oh, man. But you know, again, you want to feel you know it helped make me feel old is knowing that the song "Jump" by Van Halen is going to be mm -hmm. forty years wow. old this year because wow. it came out on the album nineteen eighty four, which was the year it came out. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I, I had a hard time when it turned thirty. No. <laughs> well, yeah, you know what team used that song as their theme hmm. back in eighty four. Let nice me guess. Four the, Cubs. I was mm. going to say. I am shocked. Are you I'm shocked? shocked. I'm, I am absolutely shocked. You know what I'd be more shocked at? If uh, David Lee Roth could do the splits like he did back then. I, 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 I doubt he could do the splits. No, like I don't think so. I, I, I no. can't even do the splits anymore. Anymore? Yes, Baron. Hmm. Anymore. You were, you were a male cheerleader? Wow. There was a time when I was younger, I could do oh. the splits. Now, <laughs> forget about that's, it. That's awesome. Well, I, I could do the splits, too. Then I hit puberty and got nards, and I couldn't do it anymore. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. look, look, I see look the, who it I, is. I see the AI has joined us. Yeah. <laughs> yes, my... my the AI is always talking about it's a, it's eighty eight, Phil. It's eighty eight. We we gotta get up to eighty eight. Otherwise, the temporal displacement won't ah, take place. Yes, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, eighty eight is the magic number. The beautiful mm -hmm. chin. Yes. Mm -hmm. The chin that will rule all. <laughs> and you know what? Let, let's just let's just keep going on all the platforms. Let's not switch oh. exclusively to Rumble. Let's just keep going. Okay. What? Really? You're a wild man. You're a You're wild, wild man. Dude, I don't know. Okay. Wow. Feeling the okay? after shows. Yeah, I know. What we're gonna do about you know the after show? My word. Can they handle can they handle that on all the other channels, the after show? How we really are. <laughs> I I am who I am. I make no apologies. Hmm. I, I apologize about myself all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get into this article from Cosmic Book News. Let me just copy and paste it. That means to... we're somewhat going to have to behave ourselves, Baron. All right. Well, I know. It's too bad. Well, you know, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, really, <laughs> especially with you, we don't, we're not none of this. You know what really grinds my gears? Oh, that was yeah, you a few weeks ago. Now hold on. Well, a minute. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know. Yeah, you, you, I told you, you know, guys we'd be flying by the seat of our pants tonight. Uh -huh. I'm not wearing pants. Oh boy, that's a little bit too much information. That's there. too much information. Well, you actually, know. There's, there's scrub bottoms. Yeah, uh, there's scrubs. Yes. They're comfy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They Definitely. are. And they got a lot of pockets too. That that's great, Baron. That that that's wonderful, Baron. Baron, you're yeah. uh, you know, Baron. Sometimes, you know, Baron. I'm going to tell Kevin Feige that you want a role in his next movie, and I think you'll find okay. it for that. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, having all the, you know, I can have my phone in one pocket, Pop Tarts in another pocket. I mean, it's That's great. Right. It's the life, man. It's the it life. Is. Yeah. 
Yes. Don't knock until you try it. And let's see. Cash is subverting Mike on his own show. <laughs> Here we go money. again. <laughs> well, Paul, you know what? You, oh, you missed boy. it. Back, backstage, it was Cash saying, okay, guys, it's time to go live. Yeah, yeah well, I know. That's right. Okay. Of course. Who are you and what do you do with cash money? Because <laughs> usually, I'll, I'll let people know. Usually it's Barrett and I trying to wrangle cash in so we can't yeah. go along. Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, cash. You know better than Fake that. News. Oh, Fake yeah. news. No. Yeah. no. Oh. It, it, nope. There's no video evidence and there's no recording. Didn't happen. <laughs> of course there's no recording. We didn't go live yet. We, we were trying to. No. Okay, I next time we'll just hit that start. You know what? Next time we hit that, 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 that yeah, live. yeah. Next time we're just gonna hit that go live, and whatever happens, uh, happens. We're all gonna be talking at the same I, time. I, I, oh, I just, oh, hold on, I just hold want on. Everybody to know that Pacific Four Four doesn't stand by anything that Cats Money Double Seven says. Yes, <laughs> and I feel the same as Mike and Baron. That's why there's mutinies going on sometimes. Oh. <laughs> No, you got the dogs barking. Good that. Well, what do, what do you guys think about this Nelson Peltz Disney thing? I mean, I think it's just easy at this point to just blast Disney for whatever. I don't know what the hell they're doing lately, it, but, you know. Oh, it, it, take a look at the track record again, you know. Uh, what, what else? I, I find, though, but I will say this in their defense to some extent. People are saying, oh, X-Men 97, oh, you should watch it. And it's interesting. Well, yeah. it, you know, we, um, what was it? Uh, Bad Batch season three, people are like, it's decent. Even people like Jace, who can't really stand Disney Star Wars at all, he's even mm -hmm. saying it's decent. But there's some things he's like, uh, they shouldn't do this. But they have this yeah. tendency, as you guys know, it's not just Disney that yeah. they're like, we need to change these things because it will make more sense. And it just doesn't. And and people will argue with you and fight with you all the time on this, but it's like, why would you change this? Or can't you just leave characters dead? That's another problem in entertainment. It's like if the character died and it was for a good cause or whatever, um, then leave it dead. It's okay. It's okay if Mace Windu, for example, never comes back. It's what? okay. I know. What? We yeah. need Mace Windu to come back, man. <laughs> We need him to come back. Oh man, he's a solo no, Star he's, Wars. He's actually liking this T cap, so yeah. <laughs> uh, he didn't. He didn't. You know, ingest something funny before that, though, did he? No. Well, I just nope. want to make sure. You know. Yeah, he's he's actually he's actually said season three of uh, Bad Batch is decent, so. Uh, okay, are man. we sure? Are we sure this is yeah, same Jace? It is. I know. Okay. I couldn't believe it myself. <laughs> Who are you, and what did you do with Jace? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Not I only have you you body snatched Cash Money to Will Seven, but now you've body snatched Jason Fox of Five Forty Studio. Exactly. Who are you? I, I want answers. Yeah. And I want them now. <laughs> I, I don't want to live in this world no more. It's just it, it, it's confusing, man. I mean, it, it, my world being turned upside down. I can only handle so much, man. Yep. Come on, man. Come on, man. I know. Come on. No malarkey. It's crazy, man. It's just crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah it's a bizarre world. Mm -hmm. This article from Cosmic Book News says Nelson Peltz blasts Woke Disney, Kevin Feige, Black Panther, the Marvels, the investor responds to claims that he doesn't know anything about the movie business. In a new interview, Nelson Peltz blasts Woke Disney, Kevin Feige, and the Black Panther, and the Marvels, for that matter, movies, while discussing his bid to get on the board of the company. The 81-year-old billionaire is currently battling Disney in a proxy war involving two Disney board seats. While responding to Disney claiming Peltz and his investors don't know anything about the movie business, Peltz fires back with mention of the recent failures of Disney, which include its animation and Marvel brands. We can also add Star Wars, which hasn't seen a movie released in years. Mm-hmm. They say we know nothing about the movie business. We don't claim we do. 
but I don't think they do. With five big losers in a row, they've lost first place in animation. They've lost first place in features. Maybe it's time to change management in those divisions, mm-hmm. Peltz told the Financial Times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What well, about Fight? Wrong. Kevin Feige happens to be in charge of one of the divisions in question. Marvel, but Pelt says he's not ready to remove Feige just yet. I'm not ready to say that, but I question his record, Peltz responded. Mm-hmm. Fans don't go to get a message. No, we go to escape. I don't care what it is. We go for escape. If there's going to be a message, it needs to connect with the story. It can't just be yeah. off the wall somewhere. <laughs> Number five is alive. You know, good message. Our bochies like the bark. Pelt, who also happens to be backed by Ike Perlmutter, who has previously reported to have butted heads with Feige at Marvel. So much so that reportedly Feige was ready to quit Marvel, but went above Pearl Marvel, Pearl Mutter, come on, Mike, which saw Iger back Feige, points out that Disney has become too woke. Well, I mean, look at the Acolyte. Perfect example. Do I have to? I just don't know. what it, You watch that trailer and you go, am I supposed to care? Well, well, that's what I was going to say. People are going to say, it's only a trailer, Mike. How do, how do you know? Oh, that trailer tells you a whole lot. Uh, yeah, plus it, they they don't know how to make trailers nowadays, so they give mm-hmm. everything out. That's plus the one the- thing I have. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing I have to give props to to Jar Jar Abrams when it came to Episode Seven. When the trailer came out, there were so many red herrings in there. You had no idea what the movie was going to be. Mm-hmm. Honestly, you no. Know. Says in here, people go to watch a movie or a show to be entertained. Correct. Mm-hmm. They don't go to get a message. Also correct. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm paying for. I'm paying to be entertained by a movie. And if I'm going to see a sequel, well, then I would like that sequel to be better than the movie that came before it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about Black Panther? I'm just happy if it's close to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about Black Panther and the Marvels? The article points out that Peltz takes aim at the Marvels and Black Panther, the former of which lost Disney $200 million, and the latter of which made nearly half a billion less than the first one. Not to mention the Marvels also made nearly a billion less than Captain Marvel. In highlighting its powerful IPs, Disney itself also omitted seven years' worth of Marvel. Well, also look at the last Indiana Jones film. Mm -hmm. Yep. The first 15 to 20 minutes were fine, in my opinion. After that, it went off. It's just, Mm -hmm. yeah, I I don't know. Some of the directions that movie went, and I know people, certain other people say, oh, it wasn't bad, it wasn't this. That's fine. I I just feel the same way as Mike on this. Just certain movies that Mike and I feel the same on this, that... It, what direction were they going? And and the whole thing about, you know, a discount short round is that that's how I felt, Mike. I don't know if you did, but that's what I've heard a lot of people call. Him. Um, yeah, that, that, that's I, what I he was is. Like, eh. Teddy was a discount short round. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like that. You know, I, no. <laughs> Phoebe no, just wasn't. I just didn't like her character too much. She could have been a lot more abrasive and annoying, but. I was just like, eh, I just, when she locked Indy out and like ran off. Yeah. yeah. If, and the Phoebe you're referring to is Phoebe Waller Bridge. Waller Bridge. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who, for some reason, Disney loves. Yeah. No, I mean, really. I mean, I'm I mean sure you... there was an, look, I'll admit there was definitely an adventure there. It was just how certain things played out. It was like, eh. yeah, I, but I even it... felt Antonio Banderas was wasted in that movie. I really do. but Because he was. And, and it goes back to what we were talking about Sunday. Mm-hmm. It was another sequel that nobody needed. Right. Nobody. I mean, 
once again, whatever, however you feel about the Crystal Skull, there was still a pretty interesting, you know, there was still adventure going on. And what happened at the end of the movie made sense, and you could have just left it there. Sure, I'm not really a fan of the aliens. I know other people like that. I wasn't a fan of that plot, but still, the movie had fun to it. And, mm -hmm. you know, this film, I just didn't really feel the fun. I was like, mm. you, you know, yeah. the thing with this, if they didn't go the woke and having Phoebe Waller Bridge in there and all that, uh, and well, I, I doubt if they would have brought back Sh uh, Shayla Br Brief, even though he has cleaned up. Or whatever. Yeah, or whatever, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, even though, you know, because of just, you know, what he was in the, but even though he has, it looks like he kind of woke up a little bit and go, ooh. Oh, yeah. uh, but, you know, they could have recast yeah. him. It, oh, they yeah, should have had it, they had the legitimate, the father passing the torch on to the son. Mm -hmm. Right, right. A, a little that, that was even That was even yeah. teased at the end of the kingdom of the crystal skull that's true mm -hmm. it was it was and right. they you're right they could have just done that baron they, that would have right. made sense i think to more people that oh okay mm -hmm. so indy's passing on the torch to his son okay will make right. sense why wouldn't he yeah well and what i think i what i think really did damage that was the buff or whatever mm -hmm. you know how I he was so. acting because everyone mm -hmm. was you know every, yes. people were saying about how he was just a pain in the ass on the set and all that Mm -hmm. I, I think that kind of ruined the fact that yeah we, we you know he could have been the next indie or you know son of indie you he know could have been uh, yeah you're that, right that full passing off because mm -hmm. you know there's more adventures that can be done Absolutely. Uh, why not why not keep it in the family but no mm -hmm. let's go with the thing where oh he's dead now and I want a divorce and and you know it's like come on we've had enough of that indie's a shell we... a shell of a the man that he once was and mm -hmm. right you know, he's in, he's mean, in the past and he's like i have to stay here and stuff i know i don't know mm -hmm. if you've ever watched the movie finally baron maybe you will it's no point, i have sometime I, I'm like, okay but... so you don't mind if yeah you don't care no, go ahead. I, I, i've heard i've heard, I've heard okay. so much about this movie yeah. so it yeah the, the thing but, is but, but just to be safe i'll go ahead and put this up mm -hmm. oh spoiler that's i that's i had no spoilers, spoilers <laughs> but yeah um you know indy being stuck in the past and being like oh i must stay here like for me personally i did not like that because for mm -hmm. obviously he would mess up the future by staying mm -hmm. in the past and it was just it was just the way he was acting i was like man how much did they pay harrison just to do this one scene like this is they crazy. paid me a lot of money cash yeah. oh i'm sure they paid him oh, a ton of money, but, oh yeah. yeah well you know and you could sit back and say it, it was probably a little bit of a swipe to us fans because they always sit back and say oh you're just living in the past mm -hmm. well you know you know you could look at it that way baron well, well, what, what about that article <laughs> from variety on sunday when we were looking uh, at the box office numbers and uh, we the aging yeah. fan base yep see and that's that's why i bring it up and i i'm actually kind of serious i mean mm -hmm. uh wizards of the coast did that to us old time uh old time gamers when they decided to come out with a character called Thacko the clown the big disgusting uh, whatever representing what mm -hmm. they feel as old fans are, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like you know, we're, Look, we're just once, bouncing when we're not once anything again. Even back in the 90s, I did not ever see once that people were not allowed to play with other people, play that card game. Never happened, never saw it card once game. yet. Uh, well, yeah, of magic. Well, you said oh, magic. I'm talking, oh, so, yeah. no, I'm talking about, yeah, well, I'm talking okay. about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about DD. D &D. Oh, that's D and D. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah, and he's, he's talking D and D. Yeah, insulting the fans, calling us Thackle the clown. And, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and you know, because Thackle was a system that they had in, in second edition and all that. You know, a big joke amongst. Oh my. D &D that was in D and D. Okay, I thought we. Yeah, were, Thackle. I thought that yeah. was also in Ma it, That would have been in Magic. Okay. Oh, you know, it was a, It was to hit. Uh, it was a. You know, basically an attack thing you know yeah. to hit whatever i can't you know whatever but you know we always call it was called faco and well, just like it D &D was always made fun and, of and but magic they had to take this, yeah go ahead yeah <laughs> but but they had to take the swipe and with everybody taking the swipe yeah. it's not hard to take a look and see oh andy's wanting to live in the past just like they call say about us all we want to do is live in the past it's like no you know you, you, the franchise out grew you you know no 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 it's it's not 
living in the past, it's like, this is what the franchise is about. That doesn't age. There's nothing aging about it. That's yeah. why it's timeless. You know. Yeah, that's you know, why I, it's timeless, like all these things. I mean, but once again, Baron, they they changed magic. They changed this. They mm -hmm. added these crossovers that we never needed in Magic. Mm -hmm. Magic was great. It's just a fantasy game. You know, you don't need to do this stuff. And they just do this. Oh, we're opening mm -hmm. up this. Uh, we're, we're, is that something you ever wanted to be excited about? See Fallout and Magic? <laughs> no. For example, no. exactly. That I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm waiting for the leisure to Larry, Larry though crossover, but oh, um, okay, leisure. <laughs> the leisure Larry crossover. I mean, why not leisure leisure yeah. suit Larry? Yeah, that, there's yeah. a game I, yeah. I, I to this Larry. day still have no interest in playing. No, no, no. no. no it's just funny. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. see if play but, that game. You know. just see if he triggers certain people, you know, because that'd be funny in itself, but. Oh um, yeah, that, that yeah, you're right there. I mean, that's mm -hmm. absolutely reason why to play the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they hit armor class. Thank you. It, <laughs> I had yeah, I, I, I don't know, um, but of course that had to be in D and D. But once again, look at what's happened with magic. I mean, you can just go mm -hmm. down the list of this stuff. And why are Hasbro losing so much money? Mm, I wonder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's well, because that's the just... current woke direction they're going in that's why yep. right and yeah you know, even you know saying about this guy here oh you don't know anything and it's like well bitch please you know <laughs> there's certain things you you have to know about and that is entertainment is that's not that's not a a thing where you sit back and call someone old for wanting entertainment yeah uh, dude that's a meme that has a Kevin Feige on the top of the meme and then on the bottom of fan bitch, please. I love it. It's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Hey, meme makers, here you go. Have fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's but, awesome. but, but real real quick to finish out this article, it's just only a oh, yeah. couple yeah. go ahead. A couple of paragraphs here. It says, Why do I have to have a Marvel that's all women? Not that I have anything against women. But why do I have to do that? Why can't I have Marvels that are both? Why do I need an all-black cast? Pelts questioned. The vote for the board seats will be revealed on April 3rd at Disney's annual meeting. Recently, saw George Lucas back Bob Iger. I still stand by what I said last Wednesday. I still think it's a red herring. Well, I don't think mean, we're gonna. I, I don't think we're gonna know. The whole detail well, that's coming out. Another I, article, I, I think there's something up. I another think. article came out and said he's not really pleased with the direction that Star Wars is going, but he's still backing mm. Iger probably for a money reason. Look, I know it's mm. easy to jump on this whole George betrayed us, you know, what are we oh. doing stuff, but, you know, just, mm. dude, why did, didn't you guys feel that way, you know, when the prequels came out? A number of fans. I remember they did. Didn't, I didn't did have feel a problem with the prequels. I didn't either. I didn't have well, those big problems like pre people did with the prequels. I had some I mean, issues, but not much at all. Yeah, I mean, I had some issues with it. And again, that kind of goes with the story of World Wise that he had and how he had to go back and, you know, try to retcon things, you know, as he right. you know, kept on doing it too, because they didn't mesh. To, but that was one thing, you know. Right. That was one thing. Uh, my also other grief is you, you should have had somebody who was not a yes man with you. Right. But hating it? No. I mean, oh. I saw Phantom Menace more than once in the theater. Me too. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know it was still mm -hmm. entertaining enough to uh, do that. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah I want a little more. And yes. I think the one problem, I think the big problem was with uh, Phantom Menace more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And this was before the film came out and there was a there was a guy from Lucasfilm and who was hitting on me, by the way, even though I was with my then wife. It's like, listen, guy, I got my wife here, okay? But he was uh, talking about, I, I wish I could say I was kidding, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I was flattered, don't get me wrong. But he was sitting back saying, be careful when Phantom Menace comes out. He says, the biggest problem is going to be all the fans' hype of what they're expecting from right. the film. And not what it is, because right. everyone was kind of expecting, you know, like the, the Geonosis battle, 
in Attack of the Clones or even the stuff that you saw in Revenge of the Sith. He was, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what what people were wanting. Uh, it was like they did. It wasn't. It wasn't the fact they wanted to see Star Wars, the, re, the original trilogy, redone. On the contrary, they wanted to see Jedi's kicking ass. Mm-hmm. And in many ways, the Phantom Menace for them let them down. It's like, oh, right. okay. Uh, it's just you know Obi Wan and that. And wait a moment, it doesn't really fit on how Obi Wan and Anakin met. And I thought he was supposed to be a great star. You know, you know all that stuff. Uh, so you know that's what a lot of fans had the issue with. And I took that to heart when I t- went to see the movie. It's like, okay, I'll I'll take this what you, what this guy said to heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, and I guess in some ways that's why I wasn't so disappointed as much. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I realized that the that the fans themselves were overhyping it, mm-hmm. and they were the ones that were ruining it for themselves. Right. You you, you have to be careful about overhyping anything. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. we're gonna get this, 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 this. It's like, and then it doesn't happen. It's like, but mm-hmm. you set yourself up for that. And you you gotta mm-hmm. back off. You set yourself up yeah. for a disappointment. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. I mean, when you talk about a rumor mill, you think you got rumor mills now? Oh my word. I mean, yeah, we, we, mm-hmm. we did have the internet, but it was still somewhat uh, growing. It wasn't as prominent as today. Mm-hmm. But uh, the word of mouth, I, I tell you, when it comes around with people in fandom and all that, the word of mouth was faster than the internet. It was faster than the speed of mm-hmm. light. Right. Uh, uh, it was just amazing how fast some of the word came out back in the days when we didn't have this uh, fancy fangled technology. So. Yeah. Nope. And real quick, I do want to say hello to Janet from another planet. It's good to hello, see you, Janet. Janet. Hi, Janet. All right. Anything else you want to add to that topic, Baron or Cash? Hmm. I don't know. I think I think that's, that's all. I mean, yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, as it goes, I think there's red herring, and I think. I, I think we will see what's happening when when it all hits the fan. Uh, there's a reason why Lucas is siding with Iger, and you know he's not happy with Iger. No, he was or lied Igor. to. I like Igor. Igor, here you go, see. Igor. So mm-hmm. what is going on? What I mean, the, 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 again, everything's on the table with this, and mm-hmm. uh, like, Lucas like is I probably said last week. Thinking outside of the box. This is mm-hmm. hypothetical. I'm not saying it is going to happen. I'm not saying that it isn't going to happen. But there's a mm-hmm. reason why George Lucas is backing mm-hmm. Bob Iger. Mm-hmm. Other than what we mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What that is, even I don't know. Well, I mean, let, let's go with the absolute most wild. He's trying to get Star uh, Lucasfilm back. Or he's... Uh, uh, of kind of a front man for mm-hmm. investors who want to do it that look at that will allow Lucas to play in his play- playground. I, Let's go with that. I, so, I, I think I think if it was anything, it would be the latter and not the former. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, I, I exactly. think there's people that there's investors or other friends of his right. and said, you know, we, we're not we're not going to tell people what we're doing, mm-hmm. and this is just all hypothetical. Right. I don't want people to start freaking out. But right. like they usually do. <laughs> well, like and this. Okay. Go oh, and then all of a sudden you say, "Oh, did that just happen?" And it's like, "Well, mm-hmm. you guys were saying this person's going to get fired, and this is going to happen, and then something else comes about it, and mm-hmm. you're just like, wow, that just happened.' Anything's well, possible with this. Like, like Mike said, he never thought he was going to see his Cubs win in his lifetime. Right. The World mm-hmm. Series. Yeah. When it comes around to this, especially when people are trying to play the little games of Thrones, right? But you have mm-hmm. to put everything on the table. And if yeah. Lucas is, you know, like those two possibilities, what would be the one thing that would ruin uh, the chances of that going forward? This other guy coming in and getting his hands on the property. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could ruin whatever deal that he may or may not be doing. And I have a sneaky feeling there is something business-wise going. And this guy coming in is ca- going to is kind of rock the boat, and he doesn't want that yeah, boat rocked. Put a wrench in the whole situation, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So, I mean, George Lucas might have his heart, you know, sympathy completely to what this guy was saying, but it's like, no, don't ruin what I'm doing here. Mm-hmm. Maybe 
it was like a year ago or whatever, maybe he would have joined sides with him. I don't know. But uh, right. we don't no, know. None of us do. That's right. the thing. Look, I, I just I just refuse to be on this, you know, George Lucas betrayed me kind of stuff because yeah, shouldn't you guys have already said that when he sold it to Disney? So well, yeah. a lot of people kind of did. No, because at the time, everybody, including myself, was thinking, "Oh, Disney's in charge of Star Wars. They're going to do wonderful things." That was the mindset. You're, you're thinking yeah. the most positive thoughts you could Let's think. See what of. happens. Let's try to be optimistic about it. Yeah, it's just. I was nervous. I have to confess, I was mm, nervous. Yeah. But, uh... Um, well, these monopolies, as we've seen, this is a problem. I mean, with Activision well, yeah. Blizzard and stuff, and it's like, well, what are you guys doing? Are you going to do something better with this? Because it just seems like the same crap is going on. So let's do something better. Let's take something well, and, and start fixing things. Start yeah, but, bringing that greatness back if we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But I was hopeful, especially when they said they were going to treat it as a different division from Disney, even though it was mm -hmm. part of Disney. Uh, <laughs> right. And the fact that Lucas had worked with them so much in the past. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he had. So, you know, I, I had reserved hope. And uh, needed to say uh, that hope was, whatever little hope I had was misplaced. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think people are quick to get on the bandwagon about uh, Tar and Feathering Lucas. Um you know, I, I me the people whom I respect out there immensely. I just gotta say, just take a step back and start looking at it because I understand. I understand. We, we've all been getting our hearts broken left mm -hmm. and right. Right. Uh, and when we feel like one of the people that we've been championing, uh, it appears that he might be uh, backstabbing us. But how many times have we seen in the movie where uh, what they're doing, even though it looks like it's sinister or against you, actually they're working for you? Yep. I mean, right. I mean, look how many people uh, were kicking in by Snape in Harry Potter. I mm -hmm. mean, right mm -hmm. there. I mean, uh, all across the board. You know, let's see what happens. It's not over yet. Let's see what happens. It's gonna. But, but, uh, one thing for sure, it's not gonna be boring. It's gonna be an entertaining show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I agree. Might be better than the, might be better than the strike. Mm -hmm. Which I wanted to go on for several seasons. I know you did. I, I wouldn't have I cared did. if it did <laughs> either. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I, I had my hopes up for season two. <laughs> <clears throat> did we lose Mike again? Oh, we lost Mike again. Okay, so you know what? we got to entertain now. Okay. But, uh, <clears throat> no, but... Uh, with that, though, again, let, let's see what happens here. I try, just like when we were doing with the with these uh, legal cases that people are getting into, except for Alec Baldwin, who is a piece of shit. Right. Uh, you know, right. let, let's see what's going on here before we get those uh, the tar feather pitchforks and and torches, because exactly. Um. Again, this is something just doesn't doesn't play quite right, though. So. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I and I hope I hope it's something where somebody else gets it. And if Lucas has any control, you know, maybe they're agreeing. Hey, you come over and we'll have you the you know you know as the creator of Star Wars, you know, you you get to call the shots type of thing. Where mm -hmm. Lucas gets all of all the world, where you know he is, he doesn't have to worry about the business aspect, but he gets to play with all the creative. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a perfect world for him. Well, I, you, uh, Disney uh -huh. Star Wars will be erased. Well, there's, you know, this is why I always mention there's always these miss opportunities. And one of the big mm -hmm. miss opportunities for me would be you see what these people are doing with low budget about mm -hmm. with YouTube doing these fan yeah. films, you know, and yeah. people are enjoying them. People are even saying this is better than what Netflix did or whatever mm -hmm. with the with property. Why not hire these people and give them a chance? See what right. they can do with a bigger budget. It's going to happen. You know, it, that, that's it's, that's it's, what I want to see more of. Yes. Well, uh, Hollywood, just like everybody else, is having an aging problem. Right. Yeah, it, 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 great to have, but, you know, but somehow they're not really encouraging that next generation, you might say. No. And uh, it, to come in. And, and it's not helping bringing back things like 
uh don't tell mom the babysitter's dead right yeah that's what the title is oh they um, did that one yeah they're that's actually coming back yeah. oh yeah, why I, know. I don't know because because they just they become lazy about this stuff yeah. i i don't know why did we need roadhouse coming back all this stuff coming back i just try something new fail at it but remember hollywood doesn't want to fail whatever they do pretty much not all of them like uh, I believe like, there's Nolan and there's other people that like, man, if we failed, we're going to try something else. But right. the other ones are so arrogant about it. That, that is a huge problem. Um, if they just take out their arrogance and start being like, yeah, we're going to fail or, or yeah. really talking to the fans like they should, Hey, you guys want to mm -hmm. buy this? You know, we're going to actually do this. Even that well, Zelda live action movie, when they say all these different words, it's like, look guys, you don't have to say that. You're trying to butter people. You're trying to butter the fans up. That's what I feel mm. like. Instead of just coming out and saying we're going to try our best to do what we can with this property, and we're hoping we succeed. Things like that. Mm -hmm. I think that would make people better. Make fans feel, especially ones who have following these franchises for so long, say, you know what, that sounds pretty reasonable. Instead of well, all these buzzwords and all this other crap that they mm -hmm. keep throwing at, especially the last few years, it's gotten worse. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, and it's going to get worse before it gets better because that, right. what, as it right. gets worse, it shows one thing they're desperate and they're literally losing. So they're trying to throw everything out, you know, just like anybody when they're back mm -hmm. in the court. Right. They're, they're yeah. tossing, they're going to toss uh, mm -hmm. every weapon under the disposal they can. And yeah. go out swinging as best as possible, and hopefully, in their minds, that they're hopefully maybe we can at least salt the earth so nothing grows again, type of thing. Yeah, um, it's just, it goes down. It's it's the stepping stones for the producers, the directors, certain ones, right. the other people. They're like, we're going to do an adaptation of this. Okay, well, then you need to follow a certain formula. No, no, no. We're going to do this for a modern audience. We're going to change this. Mm -hmm. We're going to make this better. That's where it, it all starts falling apart. It's like right. when you start saying that about games, movies, books, whatever, mm -hmm. um, then everything just starts falling apart because the people you should always target, I feel, are the main fan base that have enjoyed these property for a long time. We've seen what's happened with DC. We've seen what's happened with Marvel. We see what's yeah. happened with other books. We're seeing this censorship that should never be censored, especially right. since it was a different time. And all this stuff is is not good for entertainment. It's not good for art. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's let's uh, go in there and rewrite passages of uh, Ian Fleming's works because my my word they make James Bond out to be this sexist misogynist right. Right. murdering right. thug. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, and uh, that's what he was in the books. Uh, it's like, mm -hmm. well, yeah, that, that you know, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, that's James Bond. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's get back to that basics and. It'd be interesting to see. I know that if uh, any, I, I have a sticky feeling if any other IP or any group, I should say, gets the Star Wars IP, uh, Disney Star Wars is going to die. They're mm -hmm. going to, they're going to wipe it off, and mm -hmm. they're going to say, "Well, no, no, that's never going to happen." Well, you know what they did it with the EU, but the EU hasn't gone away. Mm -hmm. And if there's people that like the Disney stuff, at least it's still out there. You can enjoy it, but it's going to go a different direction. Now, now, now you know how we feel, mm -hmm. how we felt as old fans, right? Uh, but it will because they know that this this uh, Disney stuff wasn't catching on, especially the sequel trilogy, where their model was, hey, uh, all, this is the roadmap to the sequel trilogy. Everything mm -hmm. we have is a roadmap to the sequel trilogy. Oh, that, that's fine. Great. Wonderful. Uh-huh. Yeah. Look where that got you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. An overpriced hotel that nobody went to. Not many Except people. people no. mm -hmm. Well, I mean, a lot of people that went there was on Disney's dime. Mm -hmm. And then they went so, out there and wrote all these glorious things about how wonderful it was. Yeah, uh, was so, the no, they're show pieces. Yeah. So, that was the best, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah, I know there are people that had more common sense and uh, more money than common sense. That probably did. Maybe they were already rich and they didn't care. It's like, okay, you know, so... We we won't yeah. go to Starbucks for a day. We'll we'll go to the you know, mm. that type of thing, um, and yeah. You know, but it failed. 
It did. And real quick, I do want to say hello to the Shy Town Gamers over on Rumble. And I also want to thank almost 60 of you listening to us right now on all the platforms wow. that we are streaming on, whether it be YouTube, Rumble, mm-hmm. yeah. Twitter. I got I Facebook got right now. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I just, the, the whole thing is, Baron, and you know, a lot of people don't want to see the bigger picture where it's like, how do I create something? Okay. Yeah. When people say, oh, there's no source material. Well, that's a lie. That's a blatant right. lie. Like, don't don't say those things. Of course, there's a ton of source material. Um, yeah. But, you know, go see what you can do. And so if Hollywood would stop worrying about, you know, trying to make something amazing and that you have to love this, blah, blah, blah. And just like, well, if we fail, at least we tried. I, I think people would give them more of the benefit of the doubt. But they just can't right. in their brain, a lot of them, say that. Now, I think... As I said, I think Nolan, I think there's some other people out there. I think Scorsese and other people like they're like, we're going to try our best to give you something that's entertaining. You mm-hmm. know, even if it's based on a true story, we're going to bring out these characters, um, well, you know, and the, even when these actors say such dumb things, it's like, yeah, but I really enjoyed their acting, you know, but sometimes mm-hmm. it's hard to separate the actor from the sometimes. From the real yeah. Lives. yeah. Well, you want to you yeah. want to know who tries to give folks the best that they can each and every time they go live hmm. the three of us hmm. the three oh. of us and so many hmm. other content creators out there who give them their all each and every time yeah. they and, go live. And i also want to emphasize this and i think it's good to emphasize this on other channels look if somebody likes something look we get shit the three of us lately for rebel moon and jace likes it too and i see jace in the channel look here, here's the oh, thing. I they tried that. something new. Okay, yeah. fine. You can say that they stole this and they took this and this is crap, but give it a chance and watch yeah. it and see if Cora's story interests you. Because for me, it interests me. That's why I give it a mm-hmm. seven out of ten. Now, yes, I get tired of slow motion. It's not just Zack Snyder. It's other mm-hmm. people. They overdo it. Ever since The Matrix, mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like it's just gotten crazier and crazier and crazier. Like there has to be certain points. I feel you do the slow motion and then you don't do the slow motion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, and I, mean, I, I wouldn't. I didn't, I went into watching Rebel Moon with very low expectations, mm-hmm. and I came out of yeah. it with seven out of ten. Me too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I still had my problems yeah. with it. Me too. It's yeah. not perfect. Right. It's no. not. No. And you know but, some people like Godzilla minus one, like eight. They want to give it a ten out of ten or a nine out of ten. To me, it's. I just thought it was good. Film. I thought it was good. I I give it an eight out of ten because it wasn't just about Godzilla. It was about the human element and what was going on in World War II at the time. And I thought it was it was great. And I would recommend it oh. to a lot of people, even if they're not Godzilla fans. You you're only saying that because it was a sequel to Oppenheimer in Christopher Nolan's movie. So, <laughs> that's I mean, hilarious. <laughs> it, 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 that's the reason why. Yeah. But no, I mean, and and that's just it. Uh, again, not everything is going to be everybody's taste, especially among. No. I mean, we we need right. to get out of that mindset that you know right. that every, every one of us have to like every one of these properties. Well, no, I mean, I didn't like the uh, reboot Galactic. Okay, I didn't like the reboot Galactica at That's all. Fine. Uh, but a lot of people do. And yes, the thing I is, do. okay, if, if you like it, fine. Mm-hmm. That's no problem. Right. And, you know, and, and and go for it. It's, it's something that you like and you, you enjoy. And, mm-hmm. I know, of course, you know, Babylon 5, you know, I'm, you know, a big, and I have to sit back and see uh, with how a lot of these IPs have been going with their, with the garbage. Um, I've really gotten into Warhammer more and more and more. I'm talking about the lore. I mean, right, I'd like to go right, and play the game. Yes. I got miniatures and all that, but I mean, <laughs> right. with the books, I mean, with the yeah. the Sisters of Battle, the Adeptus Sorotitis, mm-hmm. uh, with the, you know, with, of course, the Dark Angels, my favorite legion. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, even the other legions are even the Astra Militarum. I mean, again, you know, they're gritty, hard, rough, violent books but there's still humanity in there. there's still a story in there uh mm-hmm. and, and you're not necessarily getting preached to in the stories it's like this is the way it is this is how it is uh you're going in for a ride and mm-hmm. you, you start appreciating that and you do you know it's like 
yeah. I mean, yeah, this is this is your typical man's type novel of, <laughs> yeah. you know, when people were reading like uh, the executioner books, which you know a lot shorter and a lot more formulaic. Uh, but you know, th this is our science fiction slash science fantasy version of that. And let us have this. It doesn't mean that we're worshiping uh worshiping the 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 socialist Italian party are the, the National <laughs> German Party. No, I mean, just because you like the property doesn't mean that you, you know, secretly that's what you are. No, not at all. Doesn't mean it's still a mm -hmm. Right. I mean, as the old joke goes, uh, you get the, the groups of fans together. You, you ask, uh, uh, ask the Star Wars fans, oh, would you love to, would you like to live in the world of Star Wars? Oh, yeah. I mean, fly around a million falcon, have a lightsaber, a blaster. Yeah, pew, pew, pew. You know, you go to the Star Trek fans and it's like, Oh, would you go to the uh, Star Trek universe and and live? Oh yeah, be on the Enterprise, visit Vulcan, uh, visit Risa. Green... Yeah, visit Risa. Even... Look, you... yeah. right? And... Yeah. But when it comes around to us, the Warhammer fan, they go, "Hey, so you guys want to go to the Warhammer 40k universe?" Hell no, 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 no. They they <laughs> forgot also about you know the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> they they forgot also about the whole thing of sacrifice. For example, somebody says, "Oh, you're racist." It's like, "Listen, dude, are we going to fight together? Or are we going to do these petty squabbles?" Like th that that was good banter. So we're going to fight and die for for this cause or are we going to worry about mm -hmm. somebody saying somebody else is racist? Like this right. is the kind of stuff that they forget about now. Right. This is the kind of stuff we used to enjoy. It's like, "Oh, that's awesome, man." And it's just good banter. Same thing right. with a, a female. Oh, this guy sexually harassed her. This other guy says, dude, don't do that. What the fuck are you doing? Like that, that's not cool. And so, or the woman will say, shut up. And like, it's just good banter, but they forgot about mm -hmm. all that stuff because they're so worried about their narcissism, their agenda that it, they, they can't see past that. And that's why we have this stuff that comes out and you go, that doesn't make any sense. And they worry well there's, you know, it's yeah. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I mean, get, oh, I don't know you but you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, I I read reading something actually was today, and uh, somebody wrote about how what are we doing? We have people who are minorities that are going around and disparaging themselves with their name, you know, whatever. And they, you know, they said you know, how you know a group of Chinese were calling themselves by a disparaging Chinese, uh, uh, you know. Uh, moniker and I, mm -hmm. I think uh, you know blacks and Hispanics, and it comes down to one thing: why? Because they have a sense of humor, and they yes. can they, mm -hmm. and they can and they take eight shots exactly. at themselves, just like and, it's like and well, that's no. something that we're seriously lacking anymore is a sense of yes. humor. Right. It still and is, and we're having that it, huge problem. Yes, mm -hmm. and that's what we did in the eighties, man. Growing yes. up, in the nineties. And the early two yeah. thousands, yes. Because I was in high school. Because I was in high school at the time. Uh, but uh, uh, that's why I say eighties. Right. Because it's like we, we you know, we, you hear these words, but they had no meaning other than the fact that it was just busting chops. Right. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. there were those that did go out there and used it for being disparaging. But you could tell by the tone who the person was, how it was delivered, uh, compared to when you have a bunch of people just getting together and just. Uh, you know, almost doing the yo mama things back and forth mm -hmm. with each other, mm -hmm. you know, as, as right, childish right, as those exactly. are, right? Right, right. Uh, it's like, well, that's coming back now, and you can't handle that because mm -hmm. you don't have a sense of humor and right. you mm -hmm. can't poke fun at yourself, exactly. And that's the important thing. They're so serious, all these blue haired land whales and other twit pots, other people, out there, yeah. Even, uh, even people uh, in the so-called anti-woke group or the anti-social justice group, they do the same things back to other mm -hmm. people. Like, it's ridiculous. Right. It's all becomes a clusterfuck. Yeah, well, I mean, there's some people that don't have that sense of humor there. I mean, exactly. at one time they did, but they don't. I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know what? Get that sense of humor back. Mm -hmm. uh, and if someone sits back and says disparaging thing at you, you, you laugh and chuckle or you say something. Oh, wait a moment. I got to write that one down. That's a good one. Yeah. Exactly. And I have done that. When someone shot, you know, when mm -hmm. I, I, I had some source or whatever shot at me, it's like, wait a moment. I got to remember it. And I do remember it. And get what? I even use it. It's like, if you start using it, what power does it have? Yep. Exactly. It has no power. Right. And it's like, that's what we need to get to. Yes, mm -hmm. words can hurt and such, but 
overall, you have the ability to make it power uh, uh, something that be power uh, the mm -hmm. have control over you. And uh, if you don't let that happen, it goes away. And uh, the word doesn't necessarily go away, but you know how people react or use it does. Yes. The word Hebrew at one time was a slur against the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And what did they do? Well, they took it for their own. I mean, there's a book of the Bible, Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, we're going to be disparaging and we're going to have uh, calm Hebrews. But then what happens? Some Jewish uh, entrepreneurs go out there and the magazine still is in existence. And that's what it's called, Heb. Mm -hmm. That's how you destroy the stigma mm -hmm. and such. Right, you turn it against those who are using it, right? You know, in a disparaging light, right? Mm -hmm. If they can't use it that way, it holds no power. And most importantly, why are you letting people that you have no respect for have that much control over you? Exactly. If you don't have respect for them and they uh, they shoot something like that at you, what does it matter? You don't respect them. If it came from somebody you respected, that'd be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I can understand how people are reacting to George Lucas because they're mm -hmm. visioning someone mm -hmm. that they respect, backstabbing mm -hmm. them. Uh, and as we said, like, let's wait. But but mm -hmm. you know, again, I can see why many out there did react the way they had. I, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, let's hope uh, let's hope it's for better and not worse. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, it is clearly a wait and see situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. not patient. I didn't see Star Trek Nemesis until 10 years after it was uh, out, out, out of the theater. <laughs> I'm serious, too. It's like, uh, I think, was... you know, I've never seen I've never seen Nemesis. And it's like, oh, it's on Netflix. And it's like, wow, it's been 10 years. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> I think that was the only TNG movie that bombed, actually. Yeah, because I think yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was. Because mm -hmm. they did and four. Think, so, yeah, that was the fourth one. Yeah. And I think I think it even did worse than Star Trek V. Be honest with you. I, I think that's how bad it was. It's a, that's a high, not a very high bar, but <laughs> no. Well, no, but you think about it that you know yeah. that it did worse than five. Uh, you know, in the in the theaters, it's mm -hmm. like ooh. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a it's a pretty it's a mess. I, but... I went and saw Nemesis on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I ask that often when I'm watching the movie, unless I'm absolutely bored out of my mind. Mm -hmm. I started checking mm -hmm. my watch. <laughs> thinking, okay, when is this movie going to be over? There was so much lore-wise that was wrong with that movie, too. Mm -hmm. just, it, it's just like, no. The, the, uh, it's like, why do you keep on showing Picard bald in the Academy? He wasn't. Don't no, don't you wasn't. don't you watch yeah don't you watch Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that movie is just. Eh. Well, even the cast members admitted there were things that you know Jonathan Brakes was did go after it, you know, and, and, and such. But yeah, I don't know why the they other three were successful. It's <laughs> yeah, and, and up to that point, uh, in, Insurrection was the worst of the whole lot because it was just a glorified Star Trek episode. Well, it was just a lot of I don't know. I enjoyed the politics in that, but I have to say, well, I don't yeah. remember Insurrection very much. Well, that, see, that's just it. A movie shouldn't be that way. When you see a Star Trek movie, you should remember it. And that was a mediocre episode at best that was stretched out to a two-hour movie. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Well, as I said before, it's like you can enjoy the Abrams films, but do you remember them? And I think that's a fair question. Do you remember them? And if you don't, but you remember stuff like Star Trek Four, remember Star Trek Three, remember Star mm -hmm. Trek Two, uh, motion picture, Star Trek Six. Fuck. You, well, you it, it, was, it was one of those down. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was one of those things in Nemesis when you see the picture of Picard and he's bald. I, I'm sitting there in the theater going, you no, know, in Tapestry, he had a full mm -hmm. head of hair. Yep. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I know someone's going to argue, but Mike, Q was involved in that storyline. <laughs> well, if Q was telling an accurate retelling of that particular timeline of Picard, 
Then we mm. saw that Picard had a full head of hair. Heck, mm-hmm. there was even an episode, Next Generation, mm-hmm. the, the name of it is escaping me at the moment, but it was after yeah. Jack Crusher was killed. Mm-hmm. What does Picard had? A head of hair. hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of people take that, uh, him in that episode, uh, wearing that saying, hey, look, that look at him wearing, with the debate for the, uh, for the, uh, you know, for the pilot and all that. It's like, no, no, the, those pictures are not from that. It's from that episode. Don't you remember that episode? I remember that episode. You remember? I remember. <laughs> and like I said, Sunday, you know, after having a couple of days to think about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, mm-hmm. that's one of the things that bothered me about the movie was the member berries. Remember this? Mm-hmm. Remember that? Remember when the light is green, the trap is clean? Oh, yes, we get it. We know we're watching a Ghostbusters movie. <laughs> yeah. We get it. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it's good for one line. It's good for the one line. You know, it's, it, you guys, it, you guys can go back to even movies if you ever watch Gangster Squad. It's like, yeah, it's just they just keep feeding you, and it's like, no, I don't want this. I, I don't want, want to be spoon fed. No, I don't want this. <laughs> Mike took our flag down. Oh, he he, okay. he was gone long enough. I thought we we had control. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll do better next time. <laughs> Once a pirate, always oh, a pirate, huh, Barry? Yeah, yeah, we need to get that pirate song put on there. We need to have the pirate four one four song put on there. Yes. Oh, uh, t- tell you what, tell you what. Mm. Uh, on Monday stream, don't Ooh. play that. Oh, woo! Yay! Uh, yeah, we're yeah. working on we're wa- working on the pop talk album, folks from mm-hmm. you know, right. Tagco Records. That's right. So <laughs> and, you know, and you before we it, uh... <laughs> before we get into this last story here, I do want to thank all sixty of you for watching us on all platforms. Really appreciate wow. this. We love you. Yep. But you know, but uh, yeah, uh, from Tag Co Records, uh, we're going to have the Pop Talk album, and you can get it in vinyl. Uh, you can get it reel to reel and eight track. Please, no CODs. Oh, God. <laughs> so I'm just going to hold you the, to that, Barrett. You do, don't oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, DJ Ronnie G and, and Phil McCracken. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, Mike, where's, where's that album Bear promised? You, you do realize that was a joke. I, I don't, uh, there are times, there are times I am the straight man of this, of this group. I'll admit it. Yes. Well, most of the time you are. Yeah. You got to put up with this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the Mo, you know, you, you can interchange whether it's, you know, Shemp and Curly. Mm. And Larry, mm-hmm. I want to be shemp. whichever stooge you want. You want to be shemp, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm built like curly, but I'll be shemp. <laughs> <laughs> but, but speaking of which, you know, just dawned on me, I, I didn't play this at the beginning, so I'm gonna play it now. What just okay. to make up for it? Hello, 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 hello. See, <laughs> shemp's in there. I gotta be shemp. Mm-hmm. I see. And no offense to Curly, I think Shemp was better. But well, that that was the better version that I found. So I said, you know what, mm-hmm. I'm going to make that a clip. Mm-hmm. And in this last story from Superhero Hype, it says Thundercats Adam Wingard gives promising update on live action movie. Why do we need a live action movie of Thundercats? They, they could have continued on the 2011 series. That was very good. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, they could have. Jack, awesome. Jack Black. Jack Amy Black. Amy Schumer. And Phoebe <laughs> Wallenbridge in Thundercats, the movie. Oh, no. <laughs> Directed by J.J. Abrams. Uh, uh, Baron. No, no, sorry, Baron, Kevin Smith. Baron. We, we've been yeah, light on clips. Be we've been light on clips tonight, but on that one, I just have to say this. How about new? See, that's why I did that. We were short on. We were short on oh. clips. Yeah. Oh yeah, and a special appearance by Alec Baldwin. Oh. Like I, I would say this to people. Oh, wait, wait. The... a special appearance by Alec Baldwin. Huh? Oh no! I'm trying to make up for the clips. What the hell you say? <laughs> 
Um, yeah, no, um, I just hope that, you know, once again, this is an adaptation basically. So look at the source material, watch the original Thundercats cartoon, watch the one in 2011, right? Yeah, 2011. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, always go. That, that only got one season. I know, unfortunately. unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Dang, the animation is still good in that. So good. Mm-hmm. I bought the Blu-ray when it came out. That's how good the series was, in my opinion. It was really good. They took it and just even made it more... Like, it was, I would say, more serious. I would say that... Yeah, well, was more that's, serious. What, that's what I was going to mm-hmm. bring up. I, mm-hmm. I liked it for its serious aspect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That Lionel had to learn how mm-hmm. to become the leader of the Thundercats. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That, that he had people teach them, like Panthro and Tigra. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even Tatara had to teach him how to mm-hmm. be a leader. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Very important. It's very important. It, it, mm-hmm. Again, the ups and the downs. I mean, I never really watched uh, uh, Thundercats. I'm going to have to get down and start watching some of it seriously. Um sure. I could, yeah. I mean, I don't know why I never watched it. Just don't watch movie. Thundercats Go because that animation makes you want to throw up rainbows. Well, Cal Art, right? I'm not going to watch anything that's got Cal Art in it. I'm not going to watch. Just, I'm not going to read any comics with it, anything, because I think that's one of the laziest. It's, it's fine for stuff art. like Rick and Morty, but it can't be for yeah. everything, especially when they well, already had art. Well, they changed Teen Titans, you know, they did Teen yeah. Titans Go and they did Superhero Girls Go and whatever, basically. That's how right. it feels like. It's like this art is so cheap, though. Mm-hmm. You, know? Yeah. you know, what's kind of funny, though, is my uh, future son in law for Christmas, he gave me their that vehicle they drive, drove around with in the in Hot Wheel form. I have it actually over there. On the, the Thunder called? Tank? Yeah, uh, yeah, hmm. I think so. and uh, and it's like I said, so I never, they never watched it. He felt bad. He said, no, it's still cool. It's still cool. It's still cool. Don't, don't, don't think it's bad. You know, it's like, well, what? Just a second here. Let me take a look. What, what exactly? Is it? Walking back here into the vault. I'm going way back here. Okay, opening the vault. Up. And Bear Walking was never up. seen ever and again. And he was never yeah. seen again, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the he thunder cake. The void. <laughs> yeah, it's the thunder cake. It looks cool, man. It looks like a little cat that's about ready to pounce, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's uh, what the uh, pop culture, uh, and you know, I like it. I think it's a cool. May, may we see thing. it? Mm-hmm. Oh, I suppose so. Here. All right, let, let let me put you on yeah, the big screen. Put them yeah, on the big screen. Go. Yeah, that's cool. There you go. The Thunder yeah. Tank. Yeah. Yeah, trying to hit it so the so it's a little glare as possible, but it's for their pop culture collection. There you go, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, the Thunder Tank, and oh, go yep. that way with that it. Cool, and you know, I'll probably leave it in the packaging. And, no, yeah, I don't know, I mean, maybe hanging on the ball with it. Oh, hey, little girl, and uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, yeah, I got that, and I meant to tell you guys about that before, but I forgot. Keep forgetting. Well, you, you know what I kick myself for not picking up because hmm. I seen them one time when we had a Kmart in our area. Mm-hmm. They they had the Enterprise. Hot Wheel actually released the Enterprise. Oh. There was a Bird of Prey that they also mm-hmm. released. There might have been yes. other ships too, but that's specifically what I saw the day mm-hmm. I went in there. And I kicked myself for not picking them up. Yeah, it, I got the Enterprise, the motion picture one, and then I uh and then they had the Reliant. I got the Reliant. But I didn't get any of the other ones. But yeah, I got, I got, I picked those up at least. I know they had the original Enterprise. I never saw it, so I never mm-hmm. got it. Uh, or I would have. Uh, but yeah, yeah, there was that nice big box and all that. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. But I did take them out. I did take them out. Um, I still got. I kept the box. I, they're still packed away somewhere. I haven't seen them. It makes me sad because I, I like going whoosh, whoosh, whoosh with them, <laughs> recreating the bat- Matar of Nebula battle. I'm gonna get your con. Well, when when I was in high school, I wrote you know Star Trek fan fiction. Yep, and we all did. I I had the Micro Machines Star Trek line that they came out with, and the ones that I had, I would kind of line them up to try to describe what was happening in the story as far as the formation. You know, if there were more than one ship coming out in 
you know, a Y formation or an attack formation. I was trying to mm-hmm. drive as best I could, you know, where they were coming out of, how they were coming out, and, you know, just to give the reader of my story an overall picture yep. of what oh. this was up against. Those micro machines were wonderful. I got a bunch of those too. Oh yeah, they're well made. They're very cool. Yeah. yeah. And the Star Wars ones too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let me go ahead and turn on one of the lights. Well, Eastern. Because I'm putting myself on camera. I don't know how well you're gonna see it, but Oh yeah, the sign. Yep. Hmm. And one of the other ones I have close to me. Oh yeah. The, the, the is that the one where the, the, the is that the one where the saucer separates? I had that one, but oh. unfortunately, I, I lost the nacelles because on that one, the nacelles weren't actually glued to it. They just oh would slip off. So oh yeah, really that happened. Oh, I got okay. Mine, mine, mine doesn't do that. Let me let me see. Where is it? Where is that? I don't know where I got those right now. These are my. No, oh, that's not it. I have them somewhere around here. I don't know where they are. Oh, I, pack, I, I do a good job putting your stuff away. <laughs> I don't know where I put it. Oh well, but yeah, I have my my whole collection. And yeah, I, it, I also had the oh. Clean on Bird of Prey, not the one where the wings were stationary, but the oh. wings actually went up and down. Okay, you beat me on that one. I never had that one. I knew someone who had the uh, Excelsior. When it first came out, the Excelsior had the NX on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, I, I wish I could get that. I almost stole it from him over the head and run away. Yes, Jace. And, and yes, Jace, we are getting the Thundercats live action. Why? Mm-hmm. Because yes. Uh, why them. not in Hollywood's mind? I didn't mm-hmm. ask for it. I don't want to see they, the live action think Thundercats movie. going to make them money. I don't know. Yeah. I don't I mean, think it's I, necessary. I don't. Uh, know. And, and this is a slight. Do you think it's that much of a draw to bring people in? I uh, don't know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm not being. I'm not being snarky about that. I, 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 I know. I know. I know. You're not. I don't yeah. think it would do enough to warrant a theatrical release. Yeah. Maybe if it was, you know, direct to HBO Max or another streaming service, it might do well enough there, but not for a mm-hmm. full theatrical release. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, or, what are they going to do? A lot of crappy CGI? Or are we actually going to see good makeup? I mean, it's just like these are important things. And I don't <laughs> remember, know. Re- remember the makeup in cats? Yeah, that's what they're going to oh, do. Gosh. Except they're going to keep the buttholes. That was, <laughs> dude. Um, they look like a bunch my, of furries in the cats. My mom and mm-hmm. sister went and saw that. And the only thing they liked about it was the music. From the musical because I've oh, seen the the musical sure itself the music many of times. And, oh yeah, yeah. yeah but the movie like... itself, they said they saw it and they don't need to see it again. <laughs> too many, too many CGI uh, buttholes on the cats. They just look like a bunch of furries and. It's yeah, I know. Weird. It it yeah. looked disturbing. It looked mm-hmm. disturbing. It, did, like, did. it looked creepy, in my opinion. Yes, right. it did. It did. Yes. I mean, if you're gonna do that, just make it animated, then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Honestly. So this yeah. article about the live action Thundercats movie is by Andre Joseph. It was posted on the 25th. It said Godzilla Khan, the new Empire director. Adam Wingard says the live action adaptation of the beloved 1980s. Well, I'm adding the 1980s part. It says the 80s an- animated series Thundercats is roaring ahead in the script stage. Yeah, but it, another thing about this movie is that it started, then it stopped, it started, then it stopped. Well, well and again, uh, uh, how many scripts are out there? That never get done. I mean, I, I got a mm-hmm. copy of the script of the Doctor Who film they wanted to do back in the 80s, early 90s. Thank God they didn't make it, you know, because mm-hmm. you know, I did read it. But, you know, it's like, well, that didn't make it. You know, you'd think, no. oh, Doctor Who movie is going to do it. They're going to make it. Nope. It didn't happen. No. They could have tried it if they wanted to, but yeah, sometimes they have the scripts, but they, 
they just don't do it. There was a Halo script too of a movie. Never, never mm -hmm. happened. That was a number of years ago, at least over ten years mm -hmm. ago. So, well, let's not forget iRobot, Harlan Ellison's treatment, which needs to be done. It just needs to be done. Hmm. Could be interesting. Oh, yeah. Especially having been penned by Harlan Ellison. Then. Yeah, and and having Isaac Asimov. Uh, Signing off saying, yeah, I like it, even though, you know, liberties had to be made, obviously, for certain things in there. But and, and Asimov approves. I mean, right there. You, you can't get much better than that. No. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I read it. I got it. You know, I, I read it. It's it's like, wow, this would make a great, you know, if not a movie, miniseries. Mm -hmm. Goes on to say, Simon Barrett and I are still actively working on the script. Wingard said to io9 per Gizmodo, we finished our last draft basically right when I was going into production on this movie, and we just had to put everything on hold, but right now we're actively working on it again. So whether that means that's the next thing I do or not, I'm not sure. But it's definitely one of the top priorities I have right now in terms of working on a script. And, of course, we're going to find out how he was hired to direct Thundercats. How was Wingard, he? Yeah. Wingard was announced as the Thundercats director in 2021 before the release of Godzilla vs. Khan. While previous attempts at a Thundercats movie had stalled before that time, Wingard's attachment to the project is unique in that director, the director was a fan of the property since childhood and actively pursued the movie when it became available at Warner Brothers. Yeah, but how many people who have been supposedly fans of a franchise wanted the opportunity to direct a movie in said franchise, and then that movie ends up bombing. Or even if it doesn't end up bombing, it's full of mystery boxes. Well, and I can see where in the older olden days it have been difficult uh, to transcribe this to a live action film with all the makeup you'd have to do on mm -hmm. the actors and actresses. And how would that look? And what would the cost of that budgeting be? Amongst with everything else. And, you know, and really Hollywood did have a little problem with, oh, we're going to have a movie that doesn't have any humans in it. Oh, I don't know if we want to do that. I mean, they took chances with uh, Dark Crystal, obviously, where you didn't mm -hmm. have any humans whatsoever. But, uh, you know, it didn't do well. And of course, that's another thing they point picture at. Oh, stuff like that doesn't work. So now these days, uh, We've, it's been proven otherwise. It says here, I heard there was a Thundercat script out there and it happened to be set up with some of my producers on Death Note. When guards said to Deadline in 2021, I asked them, I want to rewrite this script with my friend Simon Barrett. This is a huge passion thing for me. Nobody on this planet knows or has thought as much about Thundercats as I have. They gave me the reins. I saw this as an opportunity to do a new type of fantasy sci-fi spectacle film that people have never seen before. It's got a rich mythology. The characters are fantastic. Thundercats does not have a release date. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wingard's Godzilla Con, The New Empire, hits theaters on March 29th. I mean, I like his moxie and all that. Yeah, you, you have like to have kid. moxie in Hollywood. Well, but about this, so I mean, he, he's going out there and geeking out about this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, that's a plus. But we've seen what happens also when fans get their hands on properties. You know, mm -hmm. Jar Jar Abrams sat back all the time, saying how big a Star Wars fan he was. <laughs> uh, back in two thousand, you had that D and D film done by. A big dandy geek, and that didn't do well, and it wasn't well, really well received. I liked it, but uh, you know, maybe for all the wrong reasons. 
But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just because it's someone who's a fan doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be done well. So I mean, it it, it would be like me writing the Transformers script. Just because I'm mm -hmm. a fan of Transformers doesn't mean I'm going to get the script exactly right. Right. Yeah, but at least you would uh, do a lot of research on the source material, so that would help. Mm -hmm. uh, of course I would. I wouldn't be so arrogant mm -hmm. to say, oh, I know everything there is to know about Transformers. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. Even if I were to write, write a Star Trek movie, mm -hmm. I would still go back and do my research. Of you course. Know, what, what I think it might have been in my memory, go back and look to see what it actually was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, well, no. yeah. I mean... That's try what, try that's to take what... the best elements of Star Trek. Try to take the best elements of Transformers, whatever franchise it was. Try to take its best elements and implement them into the movie. It's like what Harv Bennett and oh gosh, I... Nicholas, Nicholas Myers. Myers. I, 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 I almost had his name slip my mind, but Nicholas Myers. What they did for the Wrath of Khan, they went mm -hmm. back and watched all the seventy-nine episodes of the original series. Mm -hmm. And out of all of that, they picked Space Seed as the story yeah. to continue. Huh. I mean, to be honest, not what I would have picked, but hey, it worked. Mm -hmm. Big time. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and let's face it, these guys weren't fans of Star Trek either, so they needed to get up on it. So, you know, whether a person's a fan or not, I don't care. It's whether you respect the property enough. And right, exactly. they obviously, you know, some of these people do. Um, not like Kevin Smith when he's going out there right away saying, I don't like He Man, but it's like, oh, boy, we feel secure, <laughs> you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, it can go, <clears throat> excuse me, can go any way. And I, I hope this really works, I really do. I mean, it'd be great if we had a big on screen. Uh, spectacular thing to say, yeah, oh, yeah I guess it'd be great need because I, I would love to be wrong. I really would. Yeah. yeah. They sit back and say, yeah, this is exactly what we need to get, you know, get the old thing going. Um, you know, mm -hmm. everything, you know, you never know. When people start seeing that you are keeping true to the universe and that's doing better than when you go out there and start going, hey, you know, make it lame. Make it more women, make it lame and gay. You know, it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cartman. You know, we need that clip. Someone's got that clip. We don't got that clip. Though. We, uh, we don't I'll have see that what clip. I can do it. I'll, I'll see yeah. what I can do. But we got this you one. You might think everything is okay, but Disney is going to get you. Kathleen Kennedy is going to get you. Disney and Kathleen Kennedy are going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> A perfect example that we can make fun of ourselves too. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's one of the keys to be able to make fun of oneself. Mm -hmm. Well, how, it how just many makes times you want to die in a game, and I'm able to make fun of myself because I end up dying so many times at a game. Although I've, I've been lucky so far in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you just. After watching mm -hmm. that, you just want to go to Disneyland and go up to people who are dressed up as uh, Disney characters and go, what do you think? You think Kathleen Kennedy's going to get you? <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> you you want to get locked you'll, up you'll in be you'll be, I was, was going to say, you'll be slapped in cuffs so quick, you won't even know what hit you. I think so. Yeah. But it would Here be comes the mouth police. Oh, yeah, it would be funny. I, it I would be laugh. funny as hell. I'd laugh. My, my oh, like, although I, I would laugh if, if it happened to you, Baron and I just there on the sidelines. See you later, Cash. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, the thing is, is Cash is the one that has the better opportunity to do that because, you know, he lives here in Beverly Hills and it's mm, not that long would drive is. down to uh, right. uh, down to a Anaheim, down to, to the uh, Orange uh, Hills of uh, yeah. Orange County. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you just you just get a megaphone or something instead of even like you know pushing them a little bit. You just <laughs> a megaphone. Hey guys, guess what? Kathleen Kennedy's gonna get you. Yeah, that, I can see that. You're driving around in the parking lot doing that in the blues mobile. You got to have that big. No, huge... you gotta you gotta go actually in the park, and <laughs> film it on. No, your the camera. blues mobile. You, you haven't seen the, the speaker mobile. that was on the blues mobile, and just have you seen the blues brothers, Dan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Yes. Okay, yeah, okay. 
Yes, yes, I've seen that. I love yeah, that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I agree. And Jace, I, I, I know you would do that. I know. Oh yeah. Yeah, Jace. In a heartbeat. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, Where's Jace? Oh, you beating up that mouse. Baron and I would be on the sidelines. I'd be. Eating oh popcorn. man. Oh, this could be fun. Oh, oh I'd oh, be. Man. No, you'd it, be it would be naturals. I'd it would be, be great. Popcorn. Right outside of the park, you have your megaphone in there. Kathleen Kennedy's gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> you say it like every five minutes. <laughs> and then, and then Cash, is, Cash is gonna be on the news. And a wild uh, man was outside yeah. of Disneyland in Anaheim, California. <laughs> a wild man with a pronounced chin was oh, out uh, was that's terrorizing right. people and <laughs> outside of terrorizing. Disney. <laughs> they would say that's terrorizing too. I'd be like, I'm just saying yeah. something over a megaphone. I'm not even in the park. <laughs> Mommy, mommy, uh, he's me. <laughs> Cash Money Double Seven, the oh, latest Disney man. villain. That's right. Ooh, that'd be, oh. There we go. Cool. There you go. I like it. I would be a real villain, not one of those misunderstood ones. <laughs> well, you, you already are. I mean, I yes, I know. So, uh, gentlemen, as we have. Go oh, man. Three hours and almost 15 minutes into this broadcast. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. say we start wrapping up. But Kathleen's going to get me. I don't want. No, I got to think. Kathleen no. Kennedy's going to get me. Don't don't, don't worry. Don't worry. I, I know Disney. someone who might, who might do his best to protect you. Time. One shall stand, one shall fall. Why throw away your life so recklessly? Yeah, so but that's what he died. That's what he died, man. How can he pretend he's Aaron, me grooming? Uh, he, he, com he comes back to life not <laughs> once, but twice. Mm -hmm. As oh. a, a more impressive Autobot. Yeah. Well, how can he be more impressive than just being Optimus Prime? I don't know. More more guns, more weapons. I don't know. Something. But he's the leader that we need. <laughs> Yes, I know. We didn't not that we asked for, but we need. <laughs> Optimus Prime 2020. Or in Prussia. Yes. I uh, actually I do have a shirt that I bought in 2012 that is Optimus Prime in 2012. But mm. I'll I'll show it to you guys one of these days. Yeah, that no, was 2024. Optimus Prime 2024. Oh yeah, you know during the during that time everybody's saying you know Romney, they're saying Obama, and I actually took a picture of myself wearing the shirt saying this is my candidate for 2012. Optimus yeah. Prime. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I, I mean, wore that to the voting booth. Did you wear that to the voting booth? I did not. I did not. Oh, disappointed. Check this out. And then I he will. starts singing more than meets the eye. Yeah. I need to see if they got build a cat for president t-shirt. I won't we'll get one of those. There you go. But before we go here, gentlemen, is there anything you'd like to promote for your channels? Going once. Go ahead, Baron. Okay. Going twice. Well, I mean, hopefully uh, we'll be doing uh, Babylon 5, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Fandom Legacy. Uh, did I say Saturday? Because that's going to be Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Hope to see you there. It's going to be uh, these two knuckleheads with me and Lord Crit. Probably not Mr. McCracken. He did sit back and say that we won't be there for. Uh, but he, you know, but he let me know if you know he will or if he won't. So he's like Schrodinger's Phil. He's Schrodinger's troll. Is he or isn't he? Well, we'll find out when we open the box. <laughs> yes. Open that box. Look at Where did I come up with this stuff? I I, I, I don't want to open the box. Uh, maybe not not. either. I made okay. sure there was no so, so we've all here. decided the three of us were not opening the box. First Baron says no. he's opening the box and he's like, nah, no. No, 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 uh, no. Right. Let's keep it let's keep it short and just scroll. I like to have the uh you know the mystery. I'm mm -hmm. all for the mystery. Oh, so you like the mystery box as well. Mm-hmm. And the mystery meat. I don't know. 
that I would question that mystery meat, Baron. And the winner of the mystery, remember that from meatballs? The winner of the mystery, yep. uh, <laughs> some kind of beef. <laughs> I I should I should watch it. I have that movie. I should watch it. Yeah, oh, are you ready for the summer? Yeah. Are you ready for a good time? A lot better than the sequel. Oh God. I I, I, didn't, I didn't want to watch it. No, nope. nope. I saw some clips. I'm all, <laughs> no. What well, the alien? The alien subplot didn't want to drag you in. Nope. <laughs> mm, okay. Oh boy. Anything else coming up on Baron Ormatag's Phantom Legacy? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Not that I can see of. Uh, hopefully, I'll start doing some of my videos again here, and uh, and uh, we'll Hope see so. uh, where we go with that. Yeah, uh, you know, okay. basically, it's going to be the lambast and cash money, Lord Crypt, and others. You know, just because I'm full of hate, hate and spite. You know, and, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't see it. Yeah. I'm going to do five minutes of Kathleen mm -hmm. Kenny's going to get you. You know. <laughs> gonna tell everybody that the chemicals in the water are turning the freaking Gorn gay. Well, I mean, if they are, you know, that's a problem. So, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, there's there's nothing right. you can do about it, Eric. Sorry, I didn't do it right. There we go. It's turning the Gorn gay. <laughs> <laughs> Baron Ormond Jones. Yep. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Popped up again. Yes, he did. And what about you, Cash? What do you got coming up on the Phantom Hooligans? Well, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to be, the main goal is going to be working on beating Act 5. We're going to hopefully beat that final boss. And then we might uh, do a few more uh, missions on there. But definitely Act 5 is going to be the main goal. And that'll be Friday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And Baron will be there. Mike, mm -hmm. And uh, anonymous, hopefully. Yeah, I gotta read the script to make sure I got all my lines right for Act Five. And all <laughs> all right. No, no, oh, we, yes. we got we got a list to Cash. Say, okay, guys, Coach Cash, man. Improve. Right. Yeah. Listen, guys, you know, <laughs> pick up the slack, Pacific. That's what right. are you doing? Mm -hmm. Come on, you mayflies! Do do Come best. on, <laughs> Come on, you mayflies! Let's stick together, and then he runs ahead. I love that. We got to stick together. And then all of a sudden, Cash runs ahead like one of the dwarfs. I think that one, I did a little bit, yes. I was trying to kill someone. A little bit? You did. Mm -hmm. I did a little bit, yeah. A little bit? A little bit, huh? A little Listen bit. Listen to this guy, Barry. A little bit. A little bit. Tiny bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I, I, but, I think uh, I think Baird, Anonymous, and I have a different point of view. Maybe. Yeah. I, well, yeah, exactly. It's all bullshit. I call bullshit. I ran ahead a little bit on that one round, I remember. Uh, I was trying to kill some uh, rats and stuff. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the good thing I ran be I ran up and helped you, man. It's all good. Most important all, thing is we don't your ass. Uh, well, most important thing is we don't allow ourselves to get surrounded, so that game can well, get we, we try problem. not we try not to, but we get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah, well, we'll that's figure where we it play out. Back to back, that's where we play back. Yeah, to Act back. Fives. I mean, look, we could do recruit on Act Five, but I think we should just stick with veteran and see how we, if we can get it done. It, you heard what Coach Cass said? No, no, we could change up our offense, we could change up our defense, but no, this playbook <laughs> right here is it's unquestionable, true. undoubtedly the best playbook I've drawn up. We're gonna exactly. stick with it until it works. Well, I don't know the best, but pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you're dating Taylor Swift. We're going to be going this way. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you maggots get out there and destroy oh, those rats in Vermintide, too. Rats in chaos, yes. The Skaven. The Skaven. The, the, the Skaven. The Skaven, yes. I got a case. There's still the rats, Skaven. though, but yeah, they're Skaven. Well, yeah, yeah they're rats. You know, they're rolling. Mm hmm. I just think of Mickey when I'm getting there. You know. Yep. <laughs> just got to make sure to always take out those. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, modders. If there's any modders out there, you got to mod Vermintide 2 to make all the Skyven look like Mickey. There you go. Uh -huh. There's your mission, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, what's I hope also... I started something. Oh. I really do. 
I think so. Well, what I'm also going, is uh, going on is, you know, I'm, I'm doing some recording testing things. I've also been testing stuff of Persona 5 Royal, um, and uh, that will be started soon. It might even be this week. I'm just testing stuff to make sure things are going on, what questions I have to answer and different stuff. Because as I will tell you guys all the time, if you're streaming, it's good to test stuff offline because you want things a certain way. It's it's ha hey Dan man walking dad man walking. Yes, welcome to Dad Man Walking over on YouTube. Good to see you, brother. Howdy, howdy. How you doing? And of course, uh, of course, he's also going to be working on his algorithm to be more human like. Uh, so hopefully, <laughs> when uh, we go along here, there'll be a much more natural flow I, of the I, cash, I, I, uh, I promise, uh, cash money AI. Yes, I promise I will not be Agent Smith and terrorize Baron. I, I promised. So. <laughs> he lies. <laughs> I know. Lies like a rug. But, um, lies like a rug. But really, uh, we've we've been enjoying these Friday night uh, multiplayers, and uh, I, I'm definitely going to keep uh, streaming on uh, on X or Twix and and YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. E e and e I will see Jace tomorrow, of course, on oh. 540. Yes, we'll Whoa. be doing some other shenanigans over there. So yeah. Oh, you mean the quarter pop talk show? Yeah, the quarter pop talk, right? <laughs> according to Phil McCracken. According to Phil. Yeah, according, yes, according yeah. to Phil. Well, you know, he is the king of legend, or was. I am now. <laughs> he can't handle. It. He can't handle it. It's hit him. Uh, no, I love it. And anything else, Cash? Um. No, that's pretty much it. There'll be a live stream gaming. There'll be a gaming stream that'll be uh, live uh, soon. And then uh, that'll probably be Persona 5 Royal. And then just those videos will be out soon. Look for those. And then uh, on the backup channel of uh, Rumble, Cash Money Madness, all one word, um, I will be doing some stuff over there here and there. So, yeah. That's just the backup channel in case, you know, because some of us have backup channels because we don't know what's going to happen with YouTube. We never know. <laughs> You never know what's going to happen with any of these streaming platforms. No, that's true. YouTube. That's true. That is true. Mm -hmm. yeah. You should have called it the Mighty Chin. The Mighty Chin. That's pretty good. On the rumble, the mighty rumble, the mighty chin. There we go. And in case anybody's wondering, I do have Barrett and Cash's links in the description on both the YouTube and Rumble side. Excuse me. Sorry yeah, I about do more with Rumble. Mm -hmm. No problem. I gotta do more with Rumble. Have yeah, to, the you the user interface could use some work. I will say. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, That's it, one it's thing not, I it's not perfect, and no. I'm mm -hmm. willing to criticize it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not gonna praise it like it's the end all be all because none of these platforms are the end all be all. They aren't. No, they aren't. but you can nice have fun on any of them. You can have fun on yeah. all of them, really. Well, nice. even Kick, I think Kick is pretty good too. I guess it is okay. Mm, I, I just never used it. And I do want to thank the 68 of you who are listening to us right now. Mm -hmm. And as far as what's coming up on Pacific Forum 4 for the YouTube channel, the Twitch channel, and the Rumble channel, I will be back tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern with more Final Fantasy VII Rebirth gameplay. We'll see how far I can get in that game. I'm currently in Chapter 8. The goal is to try to get to Chapter 9, if not Chapter 9, Chapter 10, but we'll see what happens in the four hours I plan on streaming that game. Then, of course, as you've heard, I will be with Cash and Baron and Anonymous on the Phantom Hooligans on Friday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time on the Phantom Hooligans. And then I'll be back with Cash and Baron on Saturday over on Baron Norman Tag's Phantom Legacy. That starts at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, and 5 p.m. Pacific time on Baron Norman Tag's Phantom Legacy. There will not be a Sunday edition of Pop Talk this Sunday with it being Easter. And three of us wanted to spend time with our families. Well, I'm trying but to hunt the rabbit. I set traps up and everything, so I'm hunting the rabbit, actually. Uh, so is this what we're going to hear at some point? You squooey webbit! How did you, you know? You rascally webbit! 
How did you know? I, I don't know. I, I think I'm getting to know you quite well there. Mm -hmm. mm, that's frightening. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Bum, bum, but, bum. but Monday mm. will be a special stream, and it's no fooling. It's no joke. We will be back with it's, it's going to kind of be a pop talk, kind of not. An open panel stream on Monday because oh one of us has a birthday on Monday, and that's <laughs> no joke. That's no fooling. No fooling, so, man. No fooling. There will be the pop talk slash birthday stream on Monday starting at 6 p.m. Eastern. And again, it will be an open panel. It won't be a second hour open panel. It will be a full open panel. The only thing I ask from anybody who joins the panel is save any and all self-promotion until either the end of the show when everybody's being asked to promote themselves or if you have to leave let us know in the private chat this way we can give you time to promote yourself before you leave that's all i ask but other than that again i want to thank each and every one of you for watching us whether you're watching on youtube on x on facebook or Rumble. Thank you all so very much. We greatly appreciate it. We gen mm -hmm. genuinely appreciate it because without all of you, we can't do this. And I, I think on our way out of my heart, I think so too. And I think on our way out, we have to we have to film this. Well, wait a moment. I hate this thing. It just zooms in the wrong spot. It's it. How many of you think the opinions of actors should be valued as much as, well, say, doctors, engineers, or a courageous congressman? Hmm? Right here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Right, right on. Right, right on. Yeah. Well, you're wrong. Actors are self-centered punks. <laughs> yeah. you, you got that, and you're going to make it through life. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I love it. But before we leave you here, i just got to say thank you again. I can't express it enough. You know, to have 60 people listening to your thoughts, you know, I, I never thought I'd, I'd experience it. Never did. And Not just our you. thoughts, our passions. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. something that's deep into all of our hearts here, you know. And with that, I thank you very much. And as I say now, since... You know, I did remove the baseball content for the channel because the channel shifted its focus onto entertainment and gaming. Don't ever give up on me in a game because just when you do, you might miss something. Thank you all very much and have a wonderful evening, a wonderful morning. Some of you are actually in the future. But th thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Autobots, transform and roll out. I want to thank my agent, my hairstylist, uh, my mother. Uh, I want to thank all those wonderful little people I stepped on to get here. Thank you all. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. Uh, Baron, how here? about we thank Dad Man Walking? Dad Man Walk, the 540 Studio. Janet okay. from another planet. Yeah, Janet. Bill oh. McCracken. Well, Tim Salk. Yeah, there we go. Tim. Fox Friday Nights. Yeah. Anonymous. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. DJ Roddy G. FKHC 2005, also known as Tim. And also, Big Daddy T Gap. T Gap, Steve, and Paul of Phantomology. Thank you all once again, and have a great night. Not a bad.